I'm Jody, and I'm here. We are the Bass Nerd. I'm Jody, and this is Mark. And uh, we are very excited today with our guest. Please introduce yourself. I'm Zach. Zach from, I don't know, this little band. Coheed and Cambria. Little is it Cambria new to the or scene? Cambria? Cambria. 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 <laughs> I've been saying Cambria like a fucking idiot. Oh, no, that's all right, man. People, man, how are, it's all good. Uh, just uh, in case anybody's wondering, I'm not trying to big dog anybody. I have got a little problem called gout, kids. Uh, make sure you don't eat food with too much purine. Don't eat the organ meats. Moving the camera around while I'm talking. Well, we got to oh, zoom in on that. Oh, man. My new kicks. This episode is brought to you by Prednisone. Prednisone, when God says, oh, you want to eat shrimp? Fuck you, you can't eat that anymore. Because you're going to have crystallized uric acid in your joints oh, for the rest of your man. life. But I got my tumbler, like I said. Got to hydrate to stay great. Stay hydrated. Yeehaw. And I'm just staying caffeinated. That's right. I'm going to get this shaken by the end of This episode is also brought to you by Metric Coffee. <laughs> hey Buddy hey Xavier pulled through with the cold brews. You're going to be like, Jitterbug. I'm already right? feeling a little bouncy. Yeah. I'm like, oh man. Good buzz. And yeah. also, but real, really, uh, uh, we want to thank everybody from Chicago Music Exchange for letting us use, use their space. space. Thank you. Yeah. Appreciate you very much. This is, I don't know, episode number eight or six that's maybe been yeah, filmed something here. Something like that, yeah. Uh, so thank you very much. Um, well, Zach, uh, I, let's just start at the beginning. Like, uh, what was your childhood? Were you in a musical household? What got you into it? Uh, yeah, so I, I wasn't really, like, my parents aren't musicians. Okay. My, but my, I have two, two younger brothers, and the three of us all became musicians. The Hanson band? The Hanson, yeah, not really, no. <laughs> it was the, the exact opposite. My two brothers are, like, huge metalheads. Yeah. And they had a metal band, and they were, like, you know, fist fighting and, like, yeah. rowdy. And I was the, the older brother who, like... Started out playing, you know, in like rock bands and punk bands and stuff. But then I started getting into jazz, and then they would just pick on me relentlessly. <laughs> so, and what, they, was and, the, what was the name of the family band, the family metal band? Well, they, the, the two of them had a band called Requiem. Okay. And it was like they were basically kind of like trying to be Pantera. Okay. And it, it was we you all? know guitar. My our middle brother Tyler played guitar. And my youngest brother Randy played drums. So it was like the guitar drum brother hookup. They were like, they felt this kinship with Pantera. Yeah. And they ripped. They were awesome. Very cool. You know, they were they were great. But what are they doing now? Uh, Tyler's a sergeant in the army, and hey. Randy is a is a um, he does irrigation. Okay. For like golf courses and stuff like that. Does, so we'll keep the shit talking to a minimum. Yeah. <laughs> oh, they still they can still they're both of them, man. Well, one, there was one, one day. One will kill you, and one will bury you. Yeah, ba basically. <laughs> yes. Yeah. They, they're they're, they're totally courses. equipped to do that. So <laughs> hey, I love man, those guys. Whole nine looks really fucking <laughs> yeah, fertile. Yeah. Oh yeah, that was this uh, yeah, don't fat worry, bass don't, player named Mark who's shit talking. <laughs> don't worry about that one. <laughs> yeah. Nice. But yeah, well, yeah. So my my parents listened to a lot of music, so I was exposed to a lot of music growing up. Okay. But. Did they have good taste in music? Um, they did, yeah. Yeah, yeah a we, lot of yeah. what? So my mom, like, when I was a kid, I remember listening to a lot of, you know, it was like pop music in the 80s, but it was like The Police and Peter yeah. Gabriel, Phil Collins, like the best stuff, right. you know? And my dad listened to a lot of, like, classic rock and yeah. Stones and stuff like that and country, too. My dad went through a country phase, which was interesting, but it was what, cool. Like what, like what era country? Like 90s. Ooh, yeah, like so it was Brooks like a lot of... Dunn? Yeah, and Alan Jackson yeah, and yeah. Randy Travis. Yeah. And, oh, yeah. Dude, there's like all this like interesting stuff swirling around in the back of my yeah. brain from when I was a kid, but, um, you know, that's like all those nasty Nashville dude, chicken pickers and stuff. Chattahoochee, right? baby. Yeah. Dude, it's so funny. We were, I was singing that song with James last night. I was night. just singing this morning. Gotta <laughs> learn how to swim, but I lose who I love. Yeah, yeah. About, about, about living and a little, little about love. love. <laughs> <laughs> That's what's up. Chad Hoochie, baby. Hotter yeah, than Hoochie Coochie. Yeah, what's a Hoochie Coochie? Oh, you've got to ask. I'll tell you. Yeah, I guess, I guess. Yes. Yeah. I ain't from here. I ain't from, I ain't from around here. <laughs> Fucking Yankee over here. <laughs> yeah, you know, that's true. But, you know it when you see it. Yeah, <laughs> yeah. <laughs> <laughs> probably at an Alan Jackson concert. Yeah, <laughs> right. Oh, maybe. Yeah. Fucking. Oh maybe. man. Um, yeah. So you got two older brothers. Younger brothers. Younger I'm brothers. the oldest. Yeah, so yeah. You're the yeah. oldest, yeah. and they yeah. got you in. So then. Yeah. You're you're doing the metal thing. So you're the oldest brother, and they I'm the oldest. Rich. They would. They had the audacity to rip on. Well, your older so brother. so like they're like, oh, he's into jazz. For, he won't fight back. for years, I I could I would, like, kick the shit out of both of them at the same time. Yeah. You right. know. 
And in one day, it was like over. And they, they just like, they got bigger than me. They got strong. They, That's when you, you were know. about like six years old? <laughs> <laughs> no, I was a little older. Do you but, think you were the reason why your middle brother went to the army? No. No, no, no. no. He was just like a... Oh, he, fucking bulk up he was just a... Him. He was so yeah. into like... He's, he's a badass. He's always been a badass. Awesome. So, yeah. Very I don't cool. know. I didn't, I didn't have it. My youngest brother went in the military too. He's not in anymore, but... Both of them grew yeah. up to be badasses, and I was like, uh, I'm, gonna, I'm gonna play in a metal I think band. I'm gonna go hide and practice <laughs> scales. And, you know. Thank you for your service. <laughs> Thank you guys. I'm gonna exercise <laughs> my First Amendment right as a musician. <laughs> <Yeah>. Thank you. <laughs> yeah, I'm just gonna stay lanky and over here and like. Eh. Yeah, dude, that's awesome, man. <laughs> yeah. So where did yeah. you where did you grow up? I grew up in upstate New York. Okay. In Orange County. Yeah. Nice. Yeah, and and it was cool. Like, I mean. You know, I when I was when I was in middle school, my two best friends, like, got guitars mm -hmm. for Christmas or whatever, and mm -hmm. they were, they started learning like Nirvana songs and stuff. Sure. And uh, they they were like, we're starting a band, and I was like, oh, I want to be in your band. Like, I'm gonna be in the band too. I'm gonna get a guitar. I want to play guitar. And they're like, nah, man. If you want to be in our band, you got to play the bass. And I was like, what's the bass? What is that? <laughs> it's missing a couple yeah, strings. Yeah, yeah. They were like, they were like, that's what you got to play. I was like, oh, fine. So I got a bass, and here I am. And like, then there was like the one bass player, Flea, that everyone was like, well, if I could be like Flea, yeah. I'll be cool. <laughs> yeah, yeah. That's Claypool for me, man. Yeah, but yeah. I feel like, I mean, Les is an incredible musician and it's bass player. But like, I think like t the mainstream know who Flea is. Even if you're not a bass player, that's, you know who Flea is. Yeah, that's is. always the first thing that people. Right. He's the first guy that people think of when you no, say bass. The first guy people think about nowadays is fucking Paul Rudd and slap in the bass. Oh yeah, that's true. That's true. Yeah. After that well, movie came out, me, yeah. man, that's I can't tell you how many times I heard slap in the bass. I got a fucking you know? Indiana State Trooper. <laughs> Did pulled that they pulled up they pulled my band over <laughs> no and like they were like, they were like doing a search for like it, it turned out they were like doing like trafficking like you know oh like, wow it was a whole operation so they see a van you know sketchy metalheads yeah, they yeah. always pull them over and stuff and like they they were cool <laughs> they were like well uh, you know we're not looking for any like little one hitters and stuff like that we know you're in a band but you know like the dogs are gonna sniff and stuff or like I guess that has to happen yeah. And, like, it's me and the drummer sitting on the hood of this like squad car, and one guy pulls us over, and then all of a sudden, by the time I get out of the car, there's like three more. There's a whole bunch of them. So at the end of it, they're like, "We're not going to bust you if we find a little bit." So we told them what we had. Yeah. Um, yeah, they're like, "Yeah, you're good to go." And then the one cop was just like, "So what do you play?" I was just like, "I play bass." And he's just like, "Slapping the bass," <laughs> and I was just like, I, "Is that a reference to something?" And he's like, "From the from the movie, <laughs> the movie, you know." And I was like, "I'm just fucking with you, man." And like, just like ten other state troopers are just like, ah! <laughs> "I almost nice. got shot that day." Uh, yeah, yeah. <laughs> anyway, sorry I like to that. I like that. Now, turn around, put your hands behind Yeah, yeah, yeah. <laughs> Actually, you know how we said we weren't going to bust you for finding anything? We're taking you. We're yeah. taking you yeah. in. You're taking anyway, in. Uh, so you get into bass. Yeah. Uh, do you you know, would you say like, middle school, right? Yeah, like middle school. Uh, like six, seventh grade. Yeah. I was probably like 13 or 14. Something. Nice. Uh -huh. yeah. And you got your brothers to credit for your amazing career now. Yeah. In a weird way, right? In a, in a weird... Just forcing you into, sentenced to base. Well, it wasn't my brothers. It was two of my friends in, in middle school. I'm my, sorry. Yeah. It was your friends. No, no. But my brother, we all started at the same time. Like, the same yeah. Christmas. I got a bass. My brother got a guitar. And my youngest brother got a drum set. What was the first bass? Do you remember? It was a Harmony. Of course it was. Yeah, like a... But it was like a Sears catalog. Yeah. yeah. Harmony, like a PJ. So I still have it. No way. Yeah, I still have it. I, I've gotten rid of tons of other stuff, but I kept that. Yeah, you gotta know and, where you came from. Yeah, Sorry. yeah, and I every time we move, like you know, my every time I end up moving, uh, <clears throat> and I have to move all these cases and instruments and stuff. Yeah, I'll pick up a case and feel that it's heavy and be like, "What's in here?" And I'll open it, and I, when I find that bass, I'm always like, I'll pick it up and play it. And I'm like, "Ooh, <laughs> right. this thing is wow! <laughs> How did I learn anything on this?" You but it's felt awesome. That strength. Though. Yeah, yeah, absolutely. Um, so yeah. then you're middle school, you're in the band. Um, imagine that just develops over time through high school. Yeah, right? through high school, playing in bands and stuff like that. And yeah. then, like, you know, you're a sophomore high school. Are you, like, thinking, all right, my future is go to college, be in a band. What do you kind of eat? All, so, yeah, in high school, that's all I wanted to do was play music. Yeah. And I just got more and more into it. Okay. And I started taking lessons, and I was studying with, like, two guys at the same time. Okay. Like, I got... 
serious. And yeah. I was like, this is what I want to do. That's awesome. And that's all I wanted to do. That was it. I was like, I was like, wait a minute. I would read Bass Player Magazine right. and read these interviews of guys and be like, oh man, like if, like somehow this dude gets to just travel around and play his bass. That's right. what I want to do. Right. And I, I like for better or worse, just kept kind of going after that. that. Okay. Yeah. And then you graduate high school and you're like, I'm going to keep doing music. Are you like doing teaching? Are you working yeah. in music stores? Like yeah. What? So I, I graduated high school. I went to like community college yeah. for music. Okay. And then I started working at music store. I started working at Alto Music <laughs> okay. in Middletown. Mm -hmm. And I was teaching bass lessons and I was playing gigs and I was still taking lessons from other guys. And yeah. I was still like, I was doing all like just, you know. It's crazy. Be like surviving as a musician. Try, yeah, trying, you know, trying to figure it out for a long time too. Yeah, yeah. yeah. I think all, all three of us have <laughs> history in music stores. Yeah, yeah. 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 It's like you, music you, store you work at the music store. You're like, I was teaching at the music I store. Too, yeah. I was, and then I was playing as many gigs as I could, like yeah. with whoever, right. and trying to, you know, just learn and oh, get better. I remember, you know, like early, like high school into like early twenties, it would be like. A church gig, then a metal gig, yeah. then like an R and B thing, then a rock gig, yeah. and I'm just like, and I yeah. would really it would be like one week I would sit there and I'd be like, I'm in. I mean, I would play. I used to play in some like black churches, right? Like shout music. Yeah, yeah. You know, on the south side of Chicago. I maintain and, that as like one of the best musical educations oh, you can get. Bro, oh, you're gonna I'm, learn so much. It's amazing. I, I walked in thinking I was the shit and immediately was like, I you can't keep shit. up. Yeah. I can't keep up with yeah. these guys. Yeah. Um, and like, I'm 18 playing bass or a lot of times I was playing guitar at the time. And all of a sudden this 14 year old kid would come up and just make me look like a chump. <laughs> you know? just, no, you're playing the lick wrong. It's like this. <laughs> I'm like, what the, what, what is what that? What are you doing? You ever go down those, uh, like the, the, the shout, like rabbit hole, like you'll see like, It'll just be the band, and you can kind of hear the the, pre, the pastor talking, and all of a sudden, like the keyboards would be like, the pastor's like, oh man! <laughs> all of a sudden, they just sort of creep in. Yeah, yeah, like, oh, here we go! Oh, yeah, yeah, yeah. yeah. Oh, yeah. yeah. So yeah, yeah. When the pastor's oh, like, nasty. you better not. Yeah. You better not. And he's just like, yeah, the musicians are like, the Lord can tell me what to do. The Lord, we're going there. The Lord is speaking. We're taking it. And then all of a sudden, the 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 drummer starts playing like the clap. <laughs> oh yeah, yeah, yeah. yeah. <laughs> All right, here we go. <laughs> <laughs> oh god! And then it just takes off. Right. Yeah, it's that amazing. Is, have you ever been in, in, in a church that, like that? Oh, oh yeah. Oh yeah. It's so oh, yeah. amazing, dude. Yeah. Yeah. It's good so much fun. Yeah, it's insane. It's incredible. It's, it's what a church should be like. Yeah. Like the humdrum, you know. No, it's fun. It's exciting. Yeah. It's lively. So, did you have a similar experience to Jody, like doing a lot of gigs? Yeah. Just yeah. Kind of like I would R&B play. Yeah, it was like I was playing in, you know, like. Kind of at the at that time, more of like a, I guess like post hardcore band kind of thing. Yeah, in, you know the early two thousands. Okay. Uh, Fugazi, and, you're yeah, picking up. I wish. Yeah. <laughs> you know, wanna have be. you heard of Fugazi? Oh, have you ever heard of Fugazi? Let me, let me tell you about Fugazi. <laughs> no, yeah, I love. Oh my goodness, it's one of my favorite bands. Uh, but also, yeah, playing in on like doing church gigs. Doing uh, like playing with like older blues guitarists, mm -hmm. yeah. Like playing, like sitting in it, like jazz jams. Yeah. Playing like piano trio at like a restaurant kind of thing, or yeah. like just whatever I could possibly do right. to learn and to you know. And I'd usually get yelled at a lot by older <laughs> musicians about how I was like playing stuff wrong, and it was the best way to learn how to play. I got kicked <sighs> off bandstands. Wow. In front of audiences. Whoa. Oh, it was deep. Yeah. Did you deserve to get kicked I, Absolutely. <laughs> absolutely. What was the, absolutely. What was the, what was the, like, how many times did it happen? Happened twice. So what was the first offense? So the first one, I was sitting in at this, so it was like when I was in college and first studying, like learning jazz and, and getting into it. And like, so there's a bunch of other guys that I went to school with that we would go to these like local jam sessions and try to sit in and, and play. And I sat in at this at this place. It's called Boodle's Opera House, and it was really cool. They had like a I don't remember if it was like a Wednesday night jazz jam or something like that. And me and this guitarist friend of mine sat in with this older drummer, this guy Marvin, who's a great drummer, but he's wacky. Like yeah, you know. So we 
call a tune and he's he's like you know he's like oh, i'm gonna set it up with a drum solo you know and he's mm -hmm. I was like okay i don't know what this means like, i have no <laughs> i have no experience with this kind of thing so he starts playing some stuff and i'm just like when do i come in when do I, we were you know i remember the tune we were playing footprints <laughs> right you know yeah. so you got to come in with that bass line yeah right okay. and i'm like listening to him play and i'm freaking out because I'm like, when do I start? When do I, what, what do I do? What do I do? So then I just like start at one point and he stops and he's, he like grills me and I was like, okay, maybe not now. And he like starts playing again <clears throat> and, uh, and then I like do it again. He slant, he throws his sticks down. He stands up. This place is packed, packed with people and we're on this stage, just the three of us. And he goes, can I get a real motherfucking bass player on this stage? <laughs> and I was like, <gasps> Oh no! <laughs> so I was Oof. like, ah, oh, and I just like unplugged. I didn't even like mute the. I was just, <laughs> just like, it was like, man, <laughs> and I just like dropped the cable and I walked off. I was like, oh wow. man. Hey, All how right. old were you again? I was like, I was probably nineteen when that happened, mm -hmm. which was pretty brutal. And then the second time it happened, I was sitting in at another set, jam session, and uh, I was it was I was playing acoustic bass, <clears throat> and I remember that one too. We were, the the band called, uh, uh, what was the tune? Black Narcissus. Mm -hmm. You know that tune? Right? No. I don't. Anyway, I think that was the tune. Maybe it was Green Dolphin Street. I don't know, whatever it was. There was a tune that I knew, like, the A section pretty well. They were yes. like, do you know it? And I was like, I was like, yeah, I know it. I know it. Green Dolphin sure. Street is bow. Ba, ba, da, uh, right? No, uh, it's, uh... Doesn't matter. I'm sorry. Yeah, yeah, I'm trying to. I'm trying every, to pull it every, up. In every the, in jazz the... buff who's like listening, <laughs> like, oh, you came in a little yeah, early. Yeah, a little there. early, there, buddy. <laughs> yeah, sorry. Well, whatever the tune was, I I can't remember what it was now. But anyway, I I knew I knew the A section, but I was like foggy on the bridge. Yeah, you know. And they were like, do you know it? I was like, yeah, yeah, I know it. I know it. So we start playing. Get to the bridge, and I'm like, I can't hear the changes. Yeah. My ears don't. There at the time, I was like, I can't pick this up. Yeah. But I'm like fumbling around, and. uh the guy who, like the house bass player whose bass I was playing, like I got through maybe like two or three choruses. Like mm -hmm. they played the head and then like trumpet player starts soloing. And like third time through the form, the bass player just comes up and he takes the bass out of my hand and he just points like, get off. And I was like, <laughs> okay. And I like, how, how old are these guys? <laughs> What's that? How old are these guys? That guy was, uh, he was probably in his like, 40s or 50s at the time. This is upstate New York. This is upstate New York. Yeah, it is not yeah. that serious. <laughs> oh no! I, but it was it was funny. But it was also it was it was those were good experiences for me to like Absolutely. learn. You know, it was like kind of helped me. It was it was uh, you know it, at that time, uh, it was probably like it, if. It was either going to crush me or it was going to make me work harder. Right. Yeah. And I worked harder. No, and, and, and again, the second you know, time this happens, how old are you at that point? I was probably like 20, 21, something like that. So in the span of roughly two years, this yeah. happens twice. Twice, yeah. I mean, early and, and I was, career. Yeah, and I was still going out. Every, I would, yeah. And after and it didn't it, crush your spirit, that's good. No, I mean, and failure is the best learning tool. No, he the went home best and learned teacher. that bridge that night. I did. I <laughs> went home and like I... Like, <laughs> I Never probably again. shed that tune for two weeks and was right. like learning it in every it key. Pro yeah, probably yeah. like a hundred times. Since. Yeah. Yeah. And he got yeah. to that bridge and he was like, I, I, was like, I know this tune. Like, Put me Which in. Version? Put me in. <laughs> Which version are we doing? Yeah, what, yeah. what key do you want to do it at? <laughs> oh, wherever you yeah, want to go, man. You want a major or minor? Yeah, I what do you want? What do you want? <laughs> See, I know that he was practicing because as you were kind of demonstrating, you had that left hand, oh. that thumb. I'm <laughs> like, oh, he's legit. He's, he practiced for sure. I he's doing it right. No, I was trying. I. I've played a lot of really great shows. I'm sure we all have, but the ones that stick are the ones where you just failed. Oh, miserably. dude, fail failure is a great teacher. You oh, know? I, yeah, those were <clears throat> moments. Where, like I said, playing in the in the black churches where it was like, oh no, I got to step up my game. I got to get serious because I a lot of times I could walk into the room and I would do a lot of like blues jams where it's like very easy to just sit in and play one four five yeah, kind of grooves. Yeah, yeah. Then all of a sudden you get in church and it's like, no, we're doing chromatic. Yes. Walk ups and downs yeah, yeah, and yeah. all kinds of stuff like that. Yeah. That like, oh man, I really got to get on my stuff. I got a, a quick story of I, th I think it's the, the biggest f, fuck up moment of my musical life that still haunts me to this day, where, it was I was probably in my late twenties, and a, 
you know, kind of acquaintance drummer friend of mine. I didn't know him really well, but we played a, a couple, did a couple rehearsal jams together, and he liked my playing a lot. And he recommended me for a theater gig. Oh. Now, I thought I could, I was, I knew I was not a good reader, sheet music reader, but I was like, they were like, you got a week to learn the stuff. I was like, well, I'll really shed it and kind of work it all out. I still I show up to the first rehearsal and it is very clear that I cannot hang with the rest <laughs> of these theater <laughs> sheet music. And I, that we're rehearsing and the music, the director goes, all right, whatever the song, play it. And he goes, specifically points me out and goes, play the chart, no embellishments, just play it the way it is. Ready? One, two, three, and I play it again, and I, I thought it was right, but clearly it yeah. was not right. Oh. And I just like got through the rest. I mean, you know, you just feel the room on top of you. Yeah. That, like, I'm yeah, the not heat. qualified. The heat to, in your to head. Do yeah, you feel right. the heat. You're like, oh. oh. I just felt like this big, and just I feel I felt bad for the guy who recommended me because then he was like. Who recommend? Who did I get your information from? And the other kid was there. Yeah. He took him outside and was like, "I'm sure he was like, what the fuck is this? Like, why? Why what are you giving me this? That's when you lie. That's when you lie. And uh, we finished the rehearsal. I we all everybody leaves. I called the director the, at, on my way home. I was like, "Listen, man, it's clear I'm not cut out for this. I thought I knew this. I don't. I'm sorry. I." Don't know how to apologize to you more about this, but I think you see that. I clearly see that. Like, I'll do whatever I can to like fill in, and but you should clearly find someone else to do this. Right? <laughs> I, am, I am not the guy. And I want to say he was like, "Come to the next rehearsal, but we'll find someone else." Um, but that was the like the moment. And I mean, I still I feel like I have nightmares about this this moment of being oh, like, dude. you know, and I'm. In my late 20s, I could play. Yeah. You know, I yeah. just can't do this thing that they all can do. But they can't do what I do, but that doesn't matter. Yeah, you yeah, because you're in their world. I'm you're, in yeah. their world, yeah. and I am... Oh, that's the theater. That's a world, dude. It is. It's oh. a what was, world. What was the musical? I don't even remember. You're in town. You're in town. I, but I do remember... <laughs> there was the the i got the you know there was whatever maybe 20 musical cues and one of them was a walking bass line and i'm not a walking jazz bass but there was charts on it and i shed that that song specifically every day up into it just really writing it out and learning it and doing it and then we get to the rehearsal he's like well we're cutting that one right oh. doing, i didn't even do that one and i was like you motherfucker Come on, man. <laughs> this guy can't do this it this is the one i know <laughs> this is the one i work because i'm not a, I, you know walking bass lines are kind of you know it's all in was it like a like, written line or was it like just chord charts no it was a written you it know was a like, written it was written line? so yeah. I, I you know i took it and i was like all right this is the e to g to whatever <laughs> <laughs> that was a, okay um and yeah, so that was like the most epic moment of failure that I can think of that it, that has happened in my life. Um, so now you're in your twenties, you're gigging, you're you know, working music store, teaching, taking lessons. Like, how does is there? What's the next step in the ev evolutionary musical journey for me? Yeah, to get here. Well. Do you finish, do you graduate college? I did, I got an associate, so I did okay. two years. And, and your then associates I, is in in jazz performance. Okay, you know, cool. So, hey, <laughs> neat. <laughs> um, no, it, yeah. So I, I I finished school and and just kept. I was I wanted to keep going to school, and I had auditioned at a bunch of schools, and and it just didn't end up happening. Okay. Um, you know. My, look at you now, man. Yeah. Oh, fucking yeah, look at idiots. Me hey. Where'd you, know, you audition? We'll shit talk him right now. No, 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 no. We don't need to shit talk anyway. <laughs> All right. No. Does it rhyme no, I, with I, like, Lee? No, 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 no. It wasn't, didn't have anything to do with them. Nothing, nothing to do with them. I, the, you know, the places I auditioned, I actually did very well on the auditions. And, you know, it was like a, a good experience. But my academic history, yeah. I was never a good student. I didn't care about school. I didn't like really You're a show musician. up for Yeah, yeah, man. I was like not interested. So yeah. uh because of that stuff, my f you know continued education didn't really pan out. Sure, sure. So 
yeah, I ended up working at the store for years. I, you know, I played in another band and, and toured in a van. Yeah. And, you know, did the putting records out on like small indie labels. And Surviving on 20 grand a year. Yes. Yeah, right. basically. Like going out on tour and then coming back and having to figure out how to pay right. off like what to me at the time in my early 20s felt like an insurmountable amount of debt. Right. You know, it was like, I'm going to have to work for the next five years to pay for this four week tour we did or three right. weeks or whatever, you know. Um, yeah, because you're going out and you're making like, oh, I only sold three T-shirts yeah, last night. Yeah, yeah, exactly. <laughs> it's like, oh, here's your fifteen dollar guarantee. Uh, like, I know you just drove right. from Chicago to Rapid City, right. but it's like, oh, sick, <laughs> sick. You know, nice. so thank you. Yeah. Oh, you're, thank you. Yeah, so oh, we're so lucky to the be here. Turkey sandwiches from the truck <laughs> stop. Yes, <and> yes, <laughs> yes. Yeah, we like we got creative. Living yeah. on the in, the in on the road back then when I was a kid, but but yeah, so I did that for a while, and tr you know that this band I was in was you know there were there was like a little bit of traction and you know things just didn't really work sure. out as you know bands kind of come and go and people fade in and out and all that kind of stuff. Oh, but I get it. I yeah, get it. yeah, and then and then I I was still working at the store, and I started playing. I started doing more like. Uh, you know, like top forty, yeah, gigs and stuff because those those gigs pay, pay really well. Right. So I was doing I was doing a lot of that, and then, um, like, uh, <clears throat> I was getting ready to stop doing all of it. I was like, I I don't want to do any of this kind of stuff anymore. Mm -hmm. I got to get out of the music store. I got to get because my wife was pregnant with our with how old our are first you daughter. at this time? I was in my I was like twenty. How old was I? Twenty seven ish. Yeah. You know? Approaching thirty. Yeah, approaching I gotta get thirty. My shit, shit together. Married, first kid on the way. Like I'm like, right, I got to get out of this like retail world. I, I don't think this is where I want to be. Like right. raising a family. Um, and I was like, I, I kind of don't want. Like I was playing in this this uh, this like top forty band a lot, and it was it was just a you know I was kind of going all the time. Yeah, like, we were, they, they were playing like two to three nights a week. And uh, I was like, I'm never home, mm -hmm. you know? And then I was like, I, I don't know if I want to do all of this. So I was like, I, it might be time for me to like find a, like a real job, right. get like an office job or something. 401k. Yeah, yeah, I was, I was starting to get like, you know, I gotta, I gotta, figure, I gotta figure this out. I gotta What's be your a, wife doing at up. the time? My wife at the time was working at a uh, like a tutoring center. Okay. Kind of thing. She she has a degree in education, so okay. she was like trying to break into that field. Shout out so. to your wife. Right. Shout out to my wife. She she, she is the best. The degree in education. So she's taking care of kids and taking care of her adult. And kid. taking care. Of, and she still is doing that. <laughs> right. She'll tell you that. She's like I I have three kids in the house. I have no. two daughters and me. <laughs> right. And I'm the one that gets yelled at the most because <laughs> I'm the you know. But it's it's awesome. She's the best. Um, yeah, she's still a teacher now. She's she like she's a classroom teacher for a bunch yeah. of years, and then now she does. Uh, she's like um, an ESE teacher, so she handles like kids with uh, like learning disabilities and and all. Five hundred four plan. Five hundred four IEPs, mm -hmm. all that. She writes IEPs and yeah, she's okay. she's I'm a, a dad she's as well. Awesome. Yeah, you know you know that world. Yeah, mm -hmm. so. But yeah, she's 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 awesome. But so, I was uh, trying to figure out what was next, and um, it's funny because so I uh, I was playing in this other band too uh, at the same time as like the top forty thing. It was mm -hmm. like a a buddy of mine. Um, had this project where he was just having friends come in and record on these songs that he was writing and he was sure. like a Berkeley guy and and uh he's a great musician wrote really cool songs so I like recorded some stuff with him and we did this this bunch of demos at um Applehead Studios in Woodstock okay and while we were there the engineer is this guy Chris Bittner who's a great bass player and he's the guy he's one of the guys who had engineered like and helped produce like the early Coheed records okay so we were there, and he was like, hey, man, I really like your playing. Like, could I call you for sessions? And I was like, absolutely, that would be great. And, you know, it's a cool studio up in Woodstock, not far from where I lived at the time. And I was like, yeah, let's, that sounds awesome. 
So like fast forward a year and my buddy Will, who I was playing in that band with, was back tracking drums for more demos. And he was there right before Coheed was going to start um, the Afterman records. Mm -hmm. And they had already loaded in, so there's all like their road cases and stuff. And he was like, hey, did they get a bass player? Have they found anybody or whatever? And he was like, no, no, they're going to be doing auditions. You, was, you asked them? No, I, he, my friend Will did. Ah, okay. I, did I wasn't even there, but Will was like asking about it. And then he said, you, you should call Zach. And Chris was like, oh, yeah, it's a good idea. So we, they passed my info on to management, and I got a call, and I went in and auditioned. And then I was like, that was a weird experience. <laughs> Drummer throws his sticks down. Just like, yeah. They, Let's get a real fucking bass player. They get a real player. bass player in here. This is ridiculous. So, Amateur hour. So you're you know, in this headspace where like, all right, I got to start making some moves here. I got a kid on the way. Yeah. I don't think this is really, I mean, it could be a hobby, but, you know. I, That's what I got. That's where I had ended up. I was like, all right, you know, I started taking, I started studying with uh, like an orchestral bassist. I was sure. like learning. I was like, maybe I'll do that. Like I'll play yeah. like, I'll get into, that'll be kind of a fun thing to do. It's not super time consuming. It's not, but it's like intellectually stimulating sure. and it's fun i was really enjoying yeah like, like the most rewarding thing you could do yeah yeah, yeah. And, and it's like i could do you know like a couple of you know local performances or whatever and it, it's not like i'd have to be playing all the time i wouldn't be chasing like yeah. gigs i wouldn't be playing stuff that i'm like well maybe i don't really like dig this but that sounds incredibly gig. fulfilling yeah that's and that's what i was like i can do this and have that enriching experience yeah. without needing to rely on it as like a career thing. Yeah. And then have like a, a job situation, right. you know? And yeah, and all, all that stuff kind of... Um, and then you get a call. Hey, we're going to audition. Yeah. yeah, and then I was like, whoa, what? All right. <laughs> later. <laughs> See you later. Fuck you, Leonard Bernstein. <laughs> <laughs> Did you ever get back into like the orchestral stuff? I, so I still, I still practice... That yeah. stuff, but Did yeah. You ever perform with like community orchestra? No, no, I don't. I don't really have time, unfortunately. And and I moved out of New York, so I I want to find a teacher where I am. Yeah. I just need to like actually commit to Figure finding somebody. Out. Like life has gotten crazy with like you know two kids, kids and tours. yeah tours and and family right. and stuff like that. But but I definitely want to like you know keep pursuing it. It's super fun. So yeah, I, I, um, I, yeah. I miss playing in an orchestra the yeah, most. Yeah, it's such a cool... That's, I think that's the next step for me. Yeah. Like, once I do that, I think I'll probably hang my hat in a lot of, like, different things because I just want to sit and play six notes and wait 200 measures. Yeah, I play right? tuba. Tuba's my other... Oh. That's my primary. Instrument. Nice. But it's the best. It's just, like, you just, you know, show up ripped and just play a couple <laughs> cool parts and just chuckle. <laughs> yeah. Yeah, it's the... Oh, I love Hang it. Hang out, count rests. All yeah. Right, sick. All right. <laughs> oh, yeah. Here we go. Um, do you remember the like audition process for Coheed? Like, yeah. Oh man, vividly. So you get the call. I get the call. And they're like, tomorrow or like uh it was yeah, it was like uh, hey, can you come in on Tuesday? And, and I then was like, Yeah. Learn these sure. songs or No, so so I I got the call on like a Thursday or Friday and it was like, Hey, can you come in next Tuesday? Mm -hmm. And I was like, Yeah, I'll, I'll be there. So I spent the weekend, I was like, well, maybe I should learn, like, a bunch of songs. I right. Know, what do I do? So I, like, listened to the the last record, which I think was uh, Year of the Black Rainbow at the okay. time, and learned, like, you know, the singles that came out. And right. I was like, maybe they'll have this, you know, and I went back and was like, oh, I'll learn Favor House and yeah. look at some of this stuff. And so I learned a, a bunch of stuff because I didn't know what to expect. It was right. like, you know, an audition. So I'm like, well, I feel, feel like we're going to be in a room... We're going to play. Mm -hmm. And then I get an email, and it was like, hey, here's, um, we're working on new music. Here's, like, a snippet yeah. to check out, right? So it was a, a minute long, um, like, snippet of music. Was it, it was like a phone recording or like a decent? No. <laughs> it, it was kind of like a phone, yeah. So the, it was like 30 seconds uh -huh. of scratch guitar and vocal for yeah. this song called Domino of the Destitute, which is like, turns out it's this like seven minute long, like crazy, all these parts. And right. Parts. And then another another song, which I, I think it was um, Two's My Favorite One, or yeah, it was two, Two's My Favorite One. And it's just 30 seconds yeah. of like acoustic guitar and vocal. So I was like, oh, okay. So 
the first half, it's, you know, this, like, riff from the, the verse of the song Domino. And so I learned it, and I was like, all right, well, cool. It's this, mm-hmm. this is kind of the, the, the idea. And I go into the studio, and I, you know, meet all the guys. And I'd met the guys before, because Claude at the time lived close to Alto, so he would come into the store. Mm-hmm. Okay. And uh, so, you know, I'd, we knew each other, and Travis would come in. Claude from now on. Yeah, I always tend to call him that. I was, I don't know. Well, we were texting. You're like, oh, Claude might come yeah. through, and I was like, oh, Claude. And you're cool, just go, go, Claude, Claude and whatnot. Claude, yeah, Claude, Claude. Uh, hey, I guess I always, I always do call him that. I, anyway, uh, so uh, and Travis would come in the store, so I'd met him a bunch and, and stuff, and so um, I showed up to the studio, kind of met everybody, and we walk in the control room, and they're like, all right, like we're gonna plug you in, get a sound. I was like, all right, and everybody's just sitting around. Yeah. And uh, Claude's wife, Chandra, was there. And she's like, do you, do you care if I film this? And I was like, uh, no. I'm sure. Go ahead. So she has it what somewhere. Said, yes, really? You know? I know, right? Yeah, I think about that. I'm like, yeah, I don't want what you to film that. Yeah. Only yeah. if it's good. Yeah, yeah. If it's good, you can. Yeah. If it's not good, can you just erase it? Right. Which I think I would probably go back and watch it and be like, could you erase this? No, it doesn't Please. matter now. You got the gig. I got the gig. Yeah, yeah. It's, it's true. That's true. But, uh. Yeah, and it, so they, we pulled up, you know, I plugged into an amp, we got a sound, and they pulled up the session, and, mm-hmm. like, all of a sudden, it's, like, this big, grandiose intro, drums, <laughs> cascading, <laughs> like, these big guitar parts going on. I was like, I was like, oh, uh, <laughs> all right. And they were like, all right, cool, so, um, here's record. Like, <laughs> play, play something cool. And I was like, what? <laughs> what? Really? So I, I have to, like, learn the song on the spot and, yeah. like, kind of, Figured wrap out. my head around it and it's not you know it's it's not it's a coheed song it's a coheed song yeah there's not it's not like oh here's the verse here's yeah, the it's, chorus yeah it's through composed right? it's, yeah it's way more through composed there's like you know you could call this thing a bridge but you could also call this part a bridge right. and there's like yeah, also bunch this of tags. part we used to call those tags tags yeah yeah yeah, 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 yeah. tag yeah. A it's tag like, oh, this B this is bridge A bridge B bridge, right. you, know, you know one two or three but uh so I have to like figure it out and then play some stuff and uh <laughs> and it was it was pretty stressful, and it was really funny because like I'm learning the song, so and I'm also kind of playing it real safe, yeah. like just like all right, th- this Smart. these are these are the changes. Yeah. I'm gonna kind of play them, right? Trying to like remember what they are and not I'm not gonna go like like play right. any like I'm not gonna throw chops in or like play anything wacky. Right. I'm just trying to get the idea. And at one point, Travis like he's he's like laying on the floor. Mm-hmm. Hang, like just kind of chilling and he gets up and he's like yeah man like uh, you know I guess you know you can play the roots and stuff but could you play anything cool like you know what I mean? like maybe not and I was like, I was like oh man and I'm so glad he did that because I, I in my brain he like he flipped the switch right and I was like oh alright fine you want something cool yeah I'm gonna then I'm gonna just right, start throwing I'm gonna, yeah, I'm gonna do stretch. me yeah. I'm gonna do what I'll do alright All right. fine so I started doing it and he was like, was like oh, yeah. yeah. and he doesn't even remember doing that anytime I bring that up he's like He's like, I am so sorry. Like, I wouldn't. And I was like, No, it's the best. If you That's hadn't done I mean, that, it worked. Yeah, if you hadn't done that, I, w- I probably wouldn't be here. Right. Yeah. yeah you know? great. Played it safe. Those like those little moments that yeah. seem like insignificant and yeah. might be insignificant to somebody else that end up having such a tremendous impact on your trajectory. Absolutely. Yeah. yeah it right. like totally. It 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 like he kind of put me at ease almost. I was like, Oh, yeah. oh, so you want me to just go for some stuff? Like, right. I can do that. I mean, those right. those two experiences you had getting kicked off stage, it just I it, I mean like that had to have done something to your oh, your, yeah. your framework of like how you approach right yeah absolutely and just like what may have been devastating at the time, it leads you to this point where you are right now yeah you often forget that absolutely like, yeah and it was it, it, like th- there's this uh, you know it it kind of almost taught me to trust myself more. Or like I learned how to trust myself more, and I learned how to, like, listen, right, better. I, you know, maybe more. Effectively yeah, but everything or... like leading up, like being in a you know, post hardcore band and being in bands with your brothers who are heavy metal, like having that history, you know, leads and the the Venn diagram overlaps a lot with like that Kohe kind of style. Right? Yeah, like, for sure, absolutely, you know, yeah. So like, and I'm sure even like you know have some jazz. Um, influence and history there also like that can translate to metal oh easy day, yeah yeah know? all that ear training stuff is right. like you know being able to hear that stuff and, and organize uh, 
you know, forms and stuff in, in your yeah. brain. It's like, oh, okay, cool. All right, this goes here. All right, this is... Well, right. And jazz is often very heady, right? So, like, just having um, a history of being able to, like, remember all that stuff and, you know, being able to understand intricate and difficult and constantly changing parts. Yeah, yeah, yeah. You know, yeah. that will prepare you for a coheed audition. Yeah, absolutely. Right? Yeah, there's this, like, weird background of stuff that I had played or been exposed to and it right. all kind of informed Came together, who right? I became and how you know even still becoming to this day like always right. working towards something we're so. all works in progress that's man. it man always a work in progress I'm so, still a student forever <laughs> you, you so you you do, I'm assuming you track the whole song so so that day we got you know I played through it and uh you know we did that and hung out a little bit and talked. They, you know, asked me some questions and stuff. Right. And it turned out, you know, the band I was in, uh, the, we were touring in a van and stuff. We had done a tour down the East Coast with Josh, the drummer, mm -hmm. uh, his brother Joey's band, Three. Okay. They, they were on Metal Blade and they did some, some really cool records. And this band I was in, we, we did this tour with them. So I knew Joe pretty okay. well. And I was, like, I was like, oh, yeah, I did this tour with Three. And Josh was like, oh, no, shit, that's my brother's band. I was like, I know. <laughs> you know, <laughs> Joe's awesome. You know, so yeah. cool. and uh, and it, you know, we, it turned out we knew a lot of the same people. Sure. Obviously, I grew up in kind of that area, mm -hmm. and uh, so there was like kind of a cool connection with that. Um, and uh, I was in a band. This is another wacky thing. That band, the original singer of that band that I was in, uh, was Claudio's cousin. Okay. So like, I had spent time. He lived with, I think it's Claude's second cousin. So his grandmother was Claude's aunt, and I had spent time at his aunt's house, okay. like, you know, hanging out. Yeah. So there was, like, these interesting, it was like, oh, sure. no way, that's, oh, you know, yeah, so. we all know each other kind of thing. Yeah, yeah, yeah there's, like, this funny kind of. it kinda, feels right. Yeah, yeah. Well, yeah, chemistry. if you're cool with my cousin and my, you know, you've toured with my My brother. brother. Well, thank God yeah. the cousin wasn't, like, the asshole of the family, too. <laughs> well, it's no, like, oh, you're no. good with yeah, him. Yeah, it's like, oh, <laughs> no, 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 we're out of here. We don't talk about yeah, that. Yeah, no, no, Billy no. likes you. No, 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 no. <laughs> well, but it's, it's just, it was funny because it, it, none of that stuff had anything to do with me getting in the room. Yeah. But after I got in the room right. and it was like, oh, we, wow, there's, like, all these interesting connections here and it was comfortable and, yeah. and like. Did it take the pressure off a bit? Uh, not for me. I mean, yeah. I, was, I was like, oh. It was just kind of like cool coincidental stuff to me, yeah. you know? And, and then I left. I remember leaving, and I called my wife when I was driving out of the studio. How'd it go? And she was like, how did it go? I was like, it was crazy. And, I, and she was like, well, what do you think? I was like, I am never going to hear from those guys. <laughs> it's just, not, it's, I, it was a great experience. I'm really glad I did. She kind of forced me to do it because I was like, it's like I don't know. I mean, I don't. I don't. That's I don't awesome stand a chance. That. Right. I'm not. I'm not a name right, guy. Right, because Coheed is huge. Yeah, and I'm just point, a dude you know? who works at the local music store. Right. So I was like, I'm but not, not. I'm not a name guy. I'm not like. It was but a cool experience. Do you know experience. of any other bass players who audition? I right. do. I know most of the other bass, but now well, anyone that we might know. Of? Pro yeah, you probably know most of them. Yeah. Sounds I'm not like going to force gonna, you to yeah. name gonna, names. It sounds like we want to keep that. <laughs> yeah, 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 okay, yeah, okay. yeah, yeah, yeah. We're not talking well, about that. Less but... Claypool. Yeah. No, no, less. Of them. <laughs> you you know, we play some Isley Brothers too. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> Metallica. Yeah, yeah, Metallica. Yeah. Did, uh, uh, so, yeah. what was the experience? It's like, what was the call? What was the next call? So the next call was uh, the next day. I got a call and uh, from the band's manager, and he was like, "Hey, the guys really like some of the stuff you're doing. Are you free tomorrow to come in and record some stuff?" And I was like, uh, "Sure, yeah. yeah." So I go in the next day and I tracked Dom that song "Domino" mm -hmm. and the other song "Two's My Favorite One." Like both songs, one day. I had never heard them all the way through. I just yeah. went in, tracked them both, and they are were those like, "Those the final versions. Those too? are what's on the record. Yeah, that's awesome." And they were like, nice. "You know, oh, thanks. All right, cool. We'll keep in touch." And I was I'll like, "All know. right." So I split, and then. Yeah, so those are the versions that are on the record. It was literally two days after I auditioned. I didn't know the songs. I didn't know it. So it's like, I don't know. So yeah. are you a little, let's bass nerd out for a second. Uh, are you just recording direct into the... What? No, so they, so they had an amp. Uh, I think they had like an old... Um, Apple had had like an old SVT rig. Mm -hmm. okay. um, one of those like cool... Blue line. Yeah, I think it was a blue line. And uh, an old 810, okay. it was like, you know, one of those just, it was like a rectangle. Fridge. Right. Yeah, yeah, the fridge. The fridge. Yeah. Silver, um, like silver grill cloth? I think it was a silver grill cloth, yeah. Yeah. Um, and then, uh, 
there was a there was a like I went into a DI. They they split the signal. There was right. like a clean and a dirty. Mm-hmm. Um, but I was, dude, I was so like, what is going on that I wasn't really paying attention to anything. I was just like, right. I guess I'm gonna do. Did that. you bring your bass? I brought my bass, which yeah. was yeah, it was a just a like a harmony. The harmony, <laughs> that ripping harmony. <laughs> <laughs> no, it was uh, it was like a uh, '90s American standard jazz bass. Can't go wrong. Right. Yeah, right. it's great. You know. Do you yeah. remember? Did you use any pedals or? Just... Uh, there was something they used something for like some dirt. Yeah. Mm-hmm. That they had at the studio. Okay. But I, I was so. You, you just brought your bass. I just brought. I showed up with my bass. Okay. And that was it. And I was like, I don't know what's gonna happen, but I'm just gonna go. And I was so. The uh, ghost of Leo Fender's like, I've got you, son. I got you. Don't yeah. worry. Right. You're going to be all right. We can't fuck this up. <laughs> you, you can't. Not with this jazz bass. You're going to be all right. Right. We'll get a good sound. Right. Yeah. A jazz bass and an Ampeg cat. Amp, these like, hands. These hands are good. <laughs> these golden fingers. Right. No, right. no, no. Man, I was, I was so, like, nervous. Oh, I'm and, sure. I can only imagine. Yeah, it was yeah. just like, I, I got to, like, this feels very, uh, you know, like, it felt important like i don't want to mess this up it's a great opportunity but we'll see what happens right and uh so i was a little bit preoccupied and i was like i don't know these songs and everybody again is just hanging out watching right just like standing there watching me Mm -hmm. play something cool oh you did that Hmm. interesting oh that was an interesting choice Hmm. and i'm just like what does that mean? Why is your pinky hanging? Yeah, what's what's going what on? What are you gonna do with that? What's going on with your? Oh, hand you did that with your pinky. Interesting. <laughs> Interesting. <laughs> so I don't know if I would have done it that way. Yeah. <laughs> well, um, fuck you. Play the part. Yeah. yeah, you know? yeah. Oh, why am I here? <laughs> yeah, yeah, Chris. Come on. Uh, you then record the two songs. Yeah. That make the album, and then like you were saying, they were like, "All right, great. Well, we'll, we'll keep be in touch. touch. We'll be in touch. Yeah, yeah. And yeah. that. So so then that night. I remember all this very vividly. That night, Claude emailed me and said, hey, man, that was a great job today. Here's another demo. Like, check it out. Listen to it. So it was yeah. another song. And then I went in a couple days later and tracked that one. Yeah. And uh, and so the way they were doing that record, they were doing, uh, they did like two weeks on, two weeks off, two okay. weeks on, two weeks off. Because they were, they were trying to figure out, you know, a bass player. Also, Josh had come back into the band. He was playing drums. Mm-hmm. Um so now, do you know, not to interrupt, but so you are tracking these songs. Do you know if they have other bass players also tracking I didn't songs? know at the time, but I do know now, now. that they did. Yeah. Okay, so yeah, yeah. we're going to A, B these. Yes, yes, okay. so they were A, Bing. So that somewhere, those first couple songs, there's mm-hmm. a, there's alternate versions with a different bass player. Okay. And um, You've never heard these recordings. I've never so. heard them, no, no, no. I don't think I. I mean, they may have them. I don't know. Yeah, but you know, they're on a hard drive they're somewhere. Somewhere in less in Claypool <laughs> right. version. Yeah, less less. <laughs> like, <laughs> and it's like, why did you? Why am I here? Right. <laughs> no, but they they uh yeah they had somebody somebody else coming and you know management was like we want this like we want a name guy yeah who's got all this experience. I was like a risk because this guy just works at the local music store right and. Oh yeah, it turns out like he's having his first kid next week. Yeah, right, that's which what is what I which is exactly what happened. I right. did the audition, and then like later that week, my f- first daughter was born. Right, it was like the most chaotic time, one okay. of the most chaotic times of my life. It was okay. crazy. And uh, but if you can get through that, and clearly you have, yeah, right. It's like everything else is whatever. Yeah. It's easy. I, oh, it's I can have two that. more kids. Yeah, yeah. Let's have more, <laughs> we'll have more kids. Really <laughs> so then they. Claude, Claude sends you another demo y thing. Yes. Right? It's yeah, like, yeah. all right, now here's so, the next one. So then I came in a couple of days later and tracked that. Uh-huh. And then, you know, it was like, okay, cool, we'll be in touch. Yeah. And some time went by, and uh, I'm still working at the music store. And then I get a call, hey, can you come in and track tomorrow? And I was like, uh, yeah. Mm-hmm. So I had, I had told, like, the manager of the store and oh, she was you like you didn't tell you bragged you were like no 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 i was going. i was so tight-lipped like <laughs> i didn't say anything because i was like i don't want to make a big scene about this mm. because i don't want to jinx it right it wasn't even i don't want to jinx it. it was like i don't want to look like a jerk when it doesn't happen 
because it's not going to happen. I was like, I, I just... <laughs> Mr. Cool bass player. Yeah, 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 yeah. I didn't want it to be like, oh, eh. Still waiting on that call from yeah. Go, you know? Yeah, yeah. Okay. Have they called you yet? <laughs> hey, while, while you're waiting on that call, you mind going to pick up some coffee for the rest of us? You know, yeah. like that kind of thing. <laughs> Shitter's full. Yeah. Yeah. yeah, 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 right? Hey, let, can you, can let you go Claude, unclog let the, the bathroom? Know that you're like, going to be late. Yeah, yeah you got to plunge it. <laughs> yeah, right? So I, I, play, I was like pretty tight-lipped. Only a couple people knew, but the, the manager the store knew and i and she was like her her and john and john the haber. owner hey yeah john haber was he was so cool about it he was like you know if you ever you know they would call me and say like hey can you come in tomorrow mm -hmm. and i'd say yeah and then i would tell my yeah. job and they were like go go yeah. go, See, like, go that's go, the thing go, like go. a guy like john john haber is the owner of alto music okay great dude and a guy like him he gets it it's yeah. just like what you are doing right now Let's say you didn't get the gig, right? It still validates everything that you do. Yeah. You know, it just, it validates all. And like, they, they understand that here at, mm -hmm. at CME. It's just like, if you're actively doing stuff, it only validates your position as like, you know, working at like selling the thing or Sell marketing, it, yeah. whatever it is. Exactly. It the real experience and everything. So like, that's awesome. That's, yeah. that's really great to have that support from they the were, staff. They were so cool. They were like, it got to the point where they were like, I couldn't even, it's so cool about it, doesn't even really encapsulate right. how good they were yeah. to me. Because, you know, this is like a weird transitional thing where it's like, I'm not really like working, I'm, I'm like working with the band, but I'm, it's like this, you know, it's, I'm not working a job, so there's no like yeah. paycheck coming in, but. right. Like I, I have what to. What are we? I don't know what we yeah, are. Yeah, it's yeah. like I don't even know what's going on. <laughs> we're just I, dating. I, but maybe we're... I didn't even know. Like right. I, the whole time, like the whole time making ask, the record. Right. No, I'm just right. like, all right. If you guys want me here, I'll yeah. be here. That's cool. And you know, out the, the, you know, all the people I worked with at Alto and the four, like you know, were so incredibly flexible with me. Yeah. Where it was like, hey, I'm gonna be gone for the next like two days. Yeah, they do. They I just got a call. Of, I'm going to be there Let tomorrow. And they're like, yeah, go, go. Uh -huh. Yeah, you're like, this is the thing that everybody that works here wants to do. And you've got this opportunity. Like, we're going to like help propel you into it. Right. That's awesome. And they really did. They were so supportive. That's so great. Yeah, it was. I can't say enough great things about everybody there that like. That's know. great. Let's just real quick go on a small journey in the other universe where you're working for a music store. And you get the same opportunity, everything's the same, and all of a sudden you're like, hey boss, I'm not, I've got this session with Coheed, uh, I can't come in tomorrow. And if they had said, you're here, you're fired, you probably would have said, well, I quit. I right? quit, yeah, you know, yeah. Like, I mean, as great as that all is, I think like, you know, music stores and people that work in the music industry understand that like well while this is very cool and i appreciate all this like the ultimate goal is to do something more in this realm yeah. so like if you're gonna hinder that it's just gonna blow up in your face a little bit right? yeah you know pretty like, much, yeah i mean i think some people would go like well i need the security or you got a kid coming and like oh, i can't lose my job well, that's right? the thing man yeah like, it's like whenever like whenever something happens there's always some like some chaotic thing some like whatever it is somebody else's life experience there's always somebody who does that kid thing where's a well, wolf that were me i would have like, you don't fucking know no who have done. no there's right. so you know many I mean? other things influencing what's right you know i mean like it would make sense if your instinct was either one like if your instinct would be sure. like all right i guess i quit then or you know what uh like this is not like i need to kind of refocus prioritize you know this is more realistic to do this yeah and you know, you didn't have to be forced into that position that because was, you had the support. Yeah, right. that speaks volumes right. to volumes. Your, your management. Yeah, I think absolutely. Good management like creates longevity for whatever business, and whatever operation. Absolutely, so got to have good management. Absolutely. Right. So yeah, then, it was it was incredible. And and I literally, I, dude, I worked at the store up until we started rehearsals for the first tour I did with the band. So there's a time, there's a gap between where we left off to the the rehearsals <laughs> and stuff. So. You go in, you track song number three. Yes, yeah. So I and track, did that make the record as well. That made the record as well. Yeah, everything I tracked from that point on is on the record. And how so. how many songs is that? It's two. So it's I think it's like there's 
it was like a double album that we released mm -hmm. six months apart, I think. Yeah, mm -hmm. right? volume one, two. Yeah, and it was, uh, I think there's like 10 songs on each, but uh, there's like one or two that I didn't play on. They were just like things that Claude did, you know, yeah. with like. So roughly like between 15 and 18 tracks. Yeah, something, some, what, somewhere What's the name of the record again? Afterman. After Man? Yeah, After After Man Ascension and After Man Descension. I think those have the, I mean, all, all of the records have the accompanying uh, graphic novels. Correct? Yeah, yeah, that, that one had like a like a booklet that came out, that came with it um, in one of the deluxe editions or something yeah. like that, yeah. I think the repair shop manager, Phil, had both of those and one more that Claude signed. Claude signed? Really. Yeah. yeah. <laughs> That's awesome. That's so awesome. <laughs> so, you know, you get, you get the gig. They're mm. like, they keep calling you back in for these. What was the moment that they were like, do you want to go on tour with us? Are you capable of doing so, that? So that, that I didn't, it, it happened so interestingly, right? I, I, so we, this all started in November, like late November. And by the time we get into like December. This is 2011. This is 2011, yeah. yeah. Um, we get into December and um, I, like uh, I have, um, It's really, it's kind of funny. I was out with, like, my, my parents had come back to New York to visit because, you know, their first grandchild is, is born and they want to come hang out. So yeah. we're, we would go out. We're having lunch. We're hanging out. And uh, Where, Where's your mind during that lunch? It's just, you know, all over the place. I'm like, I wonder, I wonder what's going on. I, like, like, am I being present enough is, here? Yes. Yeah. yeah. It was, and, I, and my wife would, like, pick on me. And she's like, don't, like... Because I'd be like, they're not going to call me. It's not, not going to happen. <laughs> we, when she was in labor, we were like doing laps around the maternity ward. And she, I was like, I was like, it's just, it's not going to happen. She's like, shut up. We're having a baby. Like, <laughs> yeah. And I'm like, I'm like, I can't, I got to I mean, like. The, the baby's happening. The baby's <laughs> happening. But, but, well, we're yeah, certain yeah, about yeah. this thing over here. Uh, it's, uh, it was so funny. And she's this still. This is some old news. Yeah. She's still, she still like rags on me about like, about that. But it's, it's funny. <laughs> um. But so yeah, I was I was out. We were out having lunch or or whatever, and and we were driving back home, and I get a call, and the band's manager is in town, and he wants to meet me. So I go meet every like the band and the manager. Same we, day. That day, like, hey, can you be here tonight for dinner? And I was like, oh yeah, sure. So uh, what was that conversation like with the, the in laws? S well, with my so my folks were like, go 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 yeah. go go. So I I go. And, uh, and my wife was like, yeah, you gotta go, go do it. So I, I go and we have this like, you know, dinner meeting, whatever. And, mm -hmm. and, uh, he's asking me all kinds of questions and, you know, I know he's not really confident that I could do, he's like, oh, you know, I don't know. We tour, there's a lot of touring and like, you have a new baby and like, I don't know how, like. Right. He was worried that I was going to go out on the road and be like, I can't do this. Right. And yeah. like, you know, and which I'm missing my baby. Totally understandable. Like, right. I mean, that's a normal, right. that's, I, I would probably think the same thing. I mean, like, like a lot of people have their first kid and then get partway through it. And then they come to this like moment where they're like, all right, is this what I want to, you know, I got to really think about the next five, 10 years of my life for my family, but yeah. I also want to see my kids grow. I, and, and, you know, and this kind yeah. of grilling, it, that speaks highly to the manager. That's the manager's job. Yeah, yeah, yeah. It's yeah. making sure, sure, like, are we getting the right guy? Like, I don't, we don't want to yeah. be in this position where we need a new guy in six months, yeah. a year. Because you have your, like, seasoned veteran touring bass players who have, like, you're able to vet those people. Exactly. A bit more. And, yeah, they, and, you know, all hear all the bands they've toured with you yeah. can talk to people they've worked with you can yeah. get like an idea of who they are how they operate and all that kind of, and i'm i'm a complete unknown yeah, like yeah. it's i'm i was like a wild card basically so did they make the offer that meeting or so we have that and then i go we finish and i go home and then he calls me he's like hey just you know we're gonna we're gonna go with you for the time being and I, like yeah and i think he worded it like that so i was like ah oh, man like i don't know what this means I yeah even, I, all i know is i'm making the re like i'm gonna yeah. finish making this record here you are 12 years later like i, I still don't know if I'm am i band. still yeah. am i still the guy i don't know I, yeah. and I did, that's how my brain operates but uh it's called insecurity that's right yeah i'm the, I'm the I, same way i totally totally have that and i have like the imposter syndrome like oh, wait, oh i don't belong for claude to yeah. just kick him off the stage i don't but yeah yeah wait wait for the day. can we get a real bass player up here please like somebody and then les claypool comes out <laughs> right. that actually almost happened on the last story. Jeez. No, no, no. <laughs> uh but uh yeah so so we um so wait so they say 
we uh, we want to go with you for the time being. Is this in prep for like at this point? Do you have like a list of dates? No, I have no dates, no nothing. the The record is like just started, basically, like because they were doing two weeks on, two weeks off. All right, so you're 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 the bass player for this record recording. That's how I kind of. So in my brain, I was like, well, it looks like I'm going to make this record, and that's really exciting. That's and then, awesome. And then they might get a guy to tour it. I, I get it. Like, if I'm yeah. not the guy, I understand. But right. it'd be cool to make a record with them. It's fun. Sure. And so as time goes on, they start calling me not just to track bass, but to come hang out while Josh is tracking drums. Or So there was all these times. Like, now, now all of a sudden, I'm getting pulled away from work, like, way more frequently. It's not yeah. like one day during the week. It's like three days right. for I'm not coming into work at all this week but um, you're not going there to track you're just going there to kind of hang going there to be there yeah in case you need to do a, input a, if they ask not even need but, to do anything it was like hey do you want so you know Claude started calling me and being like hey do you want to come and Josh is going to track drums and you can listen and like get ideas for stuff and I was right. like yeah for sure that's I'll come awesome up. so I would that's go a lot up. of trust it, yeah especially it was, as a new person well a new person like a you know they were they were very you should feel very, proud of that if you don't already I am I am I'm super proud of that and then they were also so cool to me like uh you know growing up listening to a lot of you know jazz and stuff like that I was I was a big fan of Modesky Martin and Wood right oh yeah. fuck yeah right so John Modesky is a local guy in Woodstock John played Keys on the Afterman records. Ah, uh, yeah, I remember reading about that. Yes. Man, that's so, and so sick. He plays with everybody. He plays with everybody. Everybody. He, everybody. And, he, and he can't. Have you ever seen John Modesky play in mm, anything? I don't think so. It Monster. Is, you yeah. got to treat yourself oh, next I'll, time he's in town. Amazing. In whatever whatever band he's playing with, whoever he's yeah. playing yeah. with, just go. He did this one with amazing. Robert Randolph called The Word. It was like yeah. Yeah, yeah. It was like a super group of jam bands. It was like North Mississippi All-Stars, Robert Randolph, John mm-hmm. Modesky. So sick. Anyway, sorry. So, but the, so John ended up tracking a bunch of stuff on those records, and Claude knew that I was a big fan. So he was like, hey, man, listen, John's going to come into the studio. You want to come hang? And I was like, absolutely. Yeah. So, like, I got to come and hang. You know, it was yeah. just like, so there was, like, these cool moments like that. And that did was he like, just fucking go nuts? Yes, he did. Yes. Yeah, he was, he was like. I, uh, That's so cool. What when he just does this, it's a flurry. Like, yeah, it's just phalanges. like this nasty, like. Phalange fury. Oh, it was so cool. I was like, I was just like, ah. And it's funny because he was in the studio another day that I was there, like before he came in to track stuff, and I didn't even recognize him because he was like, you know, in kind of like farm clothes. He's wearing this like big work jacket and yeah. like pants with like paint stains on him. Mm-hmm. He came in to talk to the guy, to the um, producer, Mike, about something. And, and, I, and then when he came back to record, I was like, wait a minute, he was here like three days ago. And I was like, <laughs> I didn't even recognize right. him. That's awesome. But yeah, he was, he was so cool. He was so nice. And he just ripped. He played, you know, piano. He played, like, I think it was, like, either Rhodes or a Wurlitzer. Yeah. yeah. Something like that. He I don't know, He just added all these great textures yeah. and, and things. But That is um, a bucket list yeah. performer for me. That was like, such a treat. And, and then he was like, ah, oh, you know, these, these tunes are pretty cool. If you guys ever need somebody to play a gig, like, in New York or something, let me know. I was like, I was like, yo, can we do that? Yeah. <laughs> can we please do that? Claude, like, one please, can we please, 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 Claude, Claude. <laughs> I'm, still, I'm still barking up that tree. Can That's we, awesome. Please, can we, can, you know, somebody maybe want to call Hey, uh, we're in Woodstock for this uh, we should, we next We should get John to yeah, come yeah, up. Yeah, 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 thank you. Yeah, yeah. <laughs> but so so that was that was a really cool experience. And it, yeah, so I didn't know. I just figured, like, maybe. Just riding the wave, I'm right? just riding the wave, take, right. taking it in, enjoying it, and, and, you know, trying to figure out what's going on. And then one day, we're in the studio, and um, Claude was like, this, you know, this is probably like, uh, it might have been like February-ish. Because, mm-hmm. you know, this is just like we're spreading, they're yeah. spreading it out over a long period of time. Yeah. And um, he was like, uh, oh, what did he say? He said something about like, you know, oh yeah, you might want to start like learning some of the back catalog. And I was like, I was like, oh yeah? And he was like, yeah, yeah, we got some dates in the spring, so you might want to start like brushing up on what some are, stuff. What are some dates? Yeah, yeah, yeah. And I was like, I was like, oh, okay. I was like, well, what should I learn? Like, what right, should there's I... a couple albums. Yeah, I was like, I was, yeah, what, what should I focus on? And he, dude, it was so funny. I, this is hilarious. He's like, well, you know, we do these things called like Never Enders where we play whole records. So he's like, just learn everything. And I was no like, idea. oh, oh, okay. Just learn, right. I'll just learn everything. Okay. Here we go. Cool. So I, yeah, I was like, I was like, I think that means I'm going to go on tour with them. And I, I, yeah. I told my wife and she was like, she was like, sick. That's great. In the spring, I was like, Yeah, she saw. She's like, This is a life changing. Yeah, yeah. She 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 knew before I did. She, yeah. 
she's way smarter than me. Right. <laughs> And I'll believes in me more than I believe in myself. You, you are not alone. Yeah, yeah. All three of us. Yeah. <laughs> for sure. If it wasn't for her, man, I'd still. Right. I don't, I don't, I don't know. Where I feel the same way about my wife, Thea. Yeah. I'm sure you feel the same oh, yeah. way about Kendall. Yeah. No. The hardest working person I know is my wife. Yeah, oh, same. my God. By it's same, same here. Without a doubt. Yeah. Without my wife, my doubt. wife works harder than your wives do, though. So I, I don't know, man. My wife works pretty hard. No. My wife can kick your wife's ass. No. My wife is so tough. Actually, Kendall could probably kick all of our asses. My wife is a fitness instructor. Uh but we don't have kids, so maybe you got me beat automatically. <laughs> it's a different toughness. I don't have any children. There, yeah, there's, a different, there's a different toughness, yeah. Right. Yeah. Um, so <laughs> then uh, what, I, I've, I've got, like, so many, like, little questions in my that keep popping up in my head. One I'm of sure them to is, derail all of them. Right. Oh, yeah, I'm sorry. Uh, was there, like, maybe this happened a little late. Was there, like, a hazing phase at all? No, they were so cool, like, yeah. from the jump. They were so nice to me and, like, yeah. very welcoming yeah nobody, and encouraging like, and encouraging yeah like yeah. play be you play you let your voice come out and uh yes. oh, sit in on this session maybe it'll give you ideas did they give you agency to like make suggestions during those i mean those things or were they like seeking that they not as much like as far as you know things that were already written or like yeah. form yeah. or anything like that but they were very open to me like interpreting things when i was Doing coming up thing. with stuff and they were yeah. like you know you know, not a lot of guidance for what to do. They were yeah. like, just do That's you. awesome. That's yeah. cool. And a lot, yeah, so there was a lot of, I, they gave me a lot of agency. You know, yeah. it wasn't like, hey, we want you to do this. Mm-hmm. Well, don't do that. Yeah. Right. Don't do that. You know, there were some things that I did that I'm sure were like, eh, maybe, maybe try something else. You right. know, and yeah. it was like, you know, sure. very you, you get that with any bandmate. And yeah, like, absolutely. Yeah. I, right. Dude, I've, I've experienced that my whole life. So it's yeah. like, you know, that's cool. I, 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 love that because sometimes i'll play something that i'm like was that really good enough yeah. or was that I yeah no know. it's always great to get feedback from the other bandmates always right? like, what do you guys think of this i think this is kind of cool or whatever or, yeah and yeah. I'll, sometimes they'll hear something that i don't hear right. and they're like no no right. and claude has a, a grander vision than sure i do for what like what he wants right the songs to be and everything so it's like i could be impeding that somehow and right. you know it's like some sometimes i need like Hey man, what's is this the, the thing you're envisioning? Yeah, like right? what do you, what yeah. do you, you know? Is this cool? Do you hear this? Do you hear that? You know, right. kind of thing. And, so, so. Uh, so there was no real hazing. No hazing at all. That's awesome. No. They, like like the, they seem like real ones. Those they're, guys. They're the best dudes. Yeah, yeah. yeah. we become like a family. Like best, did, oh, they're my best friends. Did you know any of the storyline while you were in the studio? Because a lot of uh, all the records are conceptual. Yeah, yeah, they're all conceptual. I didn't really know. The storyline for the Afterman stuff, uh, like as we were making it, he mm-hmm. was talking about some stuff, and and obviously I'm there like a couple of days and then gone, and right, then a couple of days right. and gone. So I would get little glimpses of stuff, and I was like, oh, that's pretty cool. Like, or you know, when we're working on a song, he's like, oh yeah, I wrote this about yeah this, and this is like it kind of links into the story like this, and I was like, oh, that's cool. Did that help you kind of envision what you would want to play? It kind of does, yeah, yeah. yeah. I, a lot of times when there's like a more like a heavier narrative yeah. angle to the song, yep. I can kind of get a better idea of like, okay, like how can I emulate that? Scene? Yeah, like how can I help? Yeah, uh, yeah. My bring... bandmates hate me for that exact thing, but like I, I really, turn, I turn everything into a story in my head, <laughs> and like, yeah. Uh, but that's that's so awesome. I find it so helpful. Like it's so helpful because you're you're treating it like you're scoring. Yeah, absolutely, you know? absolutely. Let more than just like, okay, here's a here's a part. And then here's a part. Yeah. Like yeah. things that I try to like build things. Right. Or more. this is the emotion that we're trying to create here. Yeah, exactly. You know? yeah. Exactly. And more so than just like, hey, man, here's a riff. Right. Or here's yeah. a part. Like, here's Yeah, you chords. can play the roots if you want. But if you play the fifth or the seventh or the whatever on top of this, it's going to create this emotion or this tension or this uh, release or whatever. Exactly. You know? Exactly. And that's what I feel like a lot of Coheed is this like, Tension, then release. And release. And tension, then release. Yes. And, yeah. Uh, now, with the experience with this this band and this style of writing and, com- and composition, uh, have you you or any of your bandmates ever considered or gone into film scoring or TV scoring or anything? I like mean, that? I'm sh- I'm sure some of the guys have 
considered it. I'm sure like I had something I think that Claude is really interested in. Yeah. yeah. And I had a, a buddy who was, you know. He would doing, be remarkable at it. You I, know? Seriously, <laughs> I'm, yeah, I'm sure everybody in the band at this yeah. point would be. I, yeah, I mean, it's the kind of thing like I would, I would love to do it. Yeah. I've had friend, I have a friend who was like working on some indie films and stuff, and he approached me about some things. You know, it never really ended up yeah. materializing, but like, just the idea of it is so cool to me yeah. to like get into that world. I, uh, it's the kind of thing that I, again, like that imposter syndrome. Like, yeah. I can't do that. Yeah, I'm not John Williams. You know, but it's like, yeah. well, no, but well, all I have to do is be me. And right, Yeah, and know. I really hope that that voice gets out of your head at some point. Yeah. Because, you know, like, it's good to be humble. Yeah. But, uh, like, you're here. You, yeah. You, you know, you, you've, you've done it. Yeah. Yeah. And well, I, it's always it's always there, but I always just get to the point where I'm like, well, I'm just going to be me and do it the I'm way gonna that I do I'm going to call my wife real quick. Exactly. And go yeah, yeah. Sorry. I'm that's, like, that's, dude, that's, that's the, she shouts that voice out all the right, time. She's like, no, right. no, you're, you're, that's awesome. Do it, 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 do it. You know, you, you've got it, you got so it, you got this, it. This is all a beautiful story of having, what it's like to have a good support system. Right. Absolutely. Yeah, you know? for, Absolutely. for me, it's my wife. For a lot of people, it's their parents or brothers and sisters or maybe but a you have parents, you have wife, you've got siblings. You've got even those like dickhead musicians, like those learning experience. Yeah, people at Alto, great, people right? at Alto. Yeah. Yeah. You know what's funny? And bandmates now. One of the yeah, exactly. One of the last gigs that I played in New York before I well, I moved to Florida a couple of years, like uh, ten years ago or so. Okay. Um, but one of the last gigs I did, like you know, it was while we were making the Afterman record. I had this this buddy of mine, Mike, who was a piano player, and he called me to do like a trio gig at a restaurant. And mm -hmm. I was like. I was like, yeah, absolutely, man. It sounds good. And uh, he he got that drummer who kicked me off the first time when I was like 19. Ooh. <laughs> he's like, oh, he's he's on the gig. He and Mike didn't have any idea about that. Like, right. That wasn't. He didn't know about any of that stuff. And I was like, oh, cool. So we do the gig, and at the end of it, Marv, the drummer, he comes up to me and he's like, he was like, hey, man, can I get can I get your number? I'm gonna I want to call you for some gigs. And I was like, yes. Here you go. <laughs> so he didn't remember. He, no, he had no idea. That guy. Yeah. He, yeah. yeah, it was not, you know, that right. was not a moment for him of like, yeah, you know, right. That was just like, no, you were one thing. of 30 bass players. Yeah, yeah, yeah. yeah. He's, he's like, he's like, I can't, I can't even remember how many bass players I've kicked off stages last week. <laughs> right. You know, like, <laughs> so yeah, it was, it, but it was, it was kind of a cool, cool moment when, for when sure. That it was very I was like, full oh, circle. It's a really nice full circle. Yeah, yeah, yeah. It was like, oh, cool. All right. Now, um, maybe I've gotten to a point where I can, like, you can finally appease Marvin. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> Yeah, um, yeah, he's he's a funny guy. So you're you're doing the record. Claude is like, all right, maybe you should learn everything else. Yes, right. Yeah, yeah. Is yeah. there a moment where you're like, you're a member of the band? Like, there, it ne no, there was never like a hey, you're the guy. <laughs> it just, you just kept getting called. I back. just kept getting called back and kept getting you know. I started getting are, looped in on emails. Ten years later, right? Twelve years later. Twelve yeah, years yeah, later. Yeah, yeah. It's it's still like. <laughs> Am I the guy? <laughs> no, it's cool. It's very cool. Yeah. yeah. Awesome. Yeah. Awesome. Um, I have a couple questions. Out of, I, if they're inappropriate questions, just pass. But like when you're like in the beginning stages and they're like, all right, there's a point where you said that like you understand that at the very least you're going to finish this album. Yeah. Right? Yeah. Are, do you get put on like, um, like a, a salary at that point or no, anything? No, and, yeah. And you're just like, I don't know if I'm getting a cut of anything. I'm just here. Yeah, it was it was basically like uh, the the setup was you'll make X amount for tracking uh -huh. like per song. Okay. And then if it if what you track gets used for the record, you get X amount right, okay. for it being used. Got it. But it was like but was any of that laid out in the beginning? Yeah, or it was just, oh, yeah, it was, was, okay. it was like laid out in the beginning, and I was like, oh, cool, you know, there's there's a little bit of bread in this. Yeah, you know, mm -hmm. it was like that. But cool. really hoping to pad my resume at the least. Yeah, right? yeah, it was like it, for me, it was almost like this is kind of a because before I real, you know, before it got to the point where I was like, oh, I guess I'm going on tour, and yeah. like, right. now this is a different, sure. different beast, you know. When I was first starting out with it, it was like. This is kind of a cool thing to do, and if anything gets used, awesome. Yeah, it kind of maybe a cool last hurrah for me playing sure. like a like doing a record or a band thing before I, I went out on top. Yeah, well, I, I mean, you know, maybe <laughs> <Right>. <laughs> I went out. Well, probably uh, yeah. at that point, 
perhaps the most prestigious thing you had done. That I had right? done. Yeah, yeah, right? yeah. The, the most, the, like, almost like uh, the, the, the most, uh, oh, what's the word I'm looking for? Like, I guess in the spotlight or, you sure. know, you know, recognizable thing that I, sure, that sure, I could sure. point to and be like, hey, you, this band, I did right. something with I them once. You know? I got the, you're going to, you walk in your house. There's the thing. There's the thing. It's like <laughs> there's the yeah, album. I did that. I, with that, your name on it. That was a cool your month wife of my made life. A, a, bit, a framed album. <laughs> yeah, and put your yeah. name on it yeah. on the wall. Yeah. Um, so that was part of the reason that I kept working at the music store because I was like, right. I, I, you, you don't know. know. I don't yeah. know. I can't like. Well, and from the, their the perspective, and... they probably honestly didn't know either. They right? no, absolutely right. Yeah. They're like, absolutely. this is all a little bit we of a vetting feeling period each other. Yeah, here. Feeling, feeling yeah, it was out. like you know? shaky. It was like, we'll see how this goes. Is this going to be? So, well, and I, we, I think you would probably agree. Like, putting out down killer bass parts on an album in a studio means a lot. Absolutely, but it's probably only twenty percent of the. Yeah. Is he cool to tour with? Absolute, Does he stink? Is he a uh, racist? Is he? You yeah. Know, like, <laughs> yes. What are all yes. these Does other Does he things? dance too much on stage? Yeah. Is he completely? Is he gonna freeze? It, yeah. Is he gonna yeah. freeze? Is he gonna overplay? Is he gonna right. get nervous and like do all this extra stuff? What is was it, what was the dynamic of that first tour? Like it was awesome. Yeah. Yeah. Like, we got did into. Did you just go in guns blazing? You're good to go. We, or yeah. Any we nerves. We went game? in. So I was I was terrified. First show, I was like, I don't, dude, this is weird. Did you yeah. get the the pre the pregame bubble yeah. guts? Oh, I had bubble. Yeah. Oh, yep. it was terrible. I was so <laughs> yep. I was so scared. Yeah. Mainly, like, so we went into rehearsals and I was I was like ready. I had all the tunes, learned mm-hmm. everything. It was cool. Uh, but going into that first show, I was like, ah, oh my god, this. What is... was? Do you remember like where it was? Yeah, it was what? in Charlottesville, Virginia. Was it like an yeah. arena type thing? No, 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 it was a it was a club, a club. like a small okay. club, yeah, okay. like a theater kind of kind Got of. Got it. Okay. And I remember like having this realization that like, oh man, this band that like I I actually listen to, mm-hmm. and like I know a lot of these tunes just from listening to them, and all my right. friends listen to this band, and tonight I am gonna play a show with them, but like on stage with them. Yeah, and it right. was like kind of this to weird. Everybody moment. else who listens to that, yes, and yeah, you yeah. have the expectation that you're going to melt their face, and, ah. and you yes. know that there's those fans like, uh, he, he, no, that he's supposed well, to play E flat that. there. Yes, there's also a 15 year old kid in there who wants to play bass, right? Yeah, and or that you're going to inspire to pick up the instrument or whatever. Like, there's so, no so pressure. many, no pr- no pressure, no. so many things that like obviously, and then doing, you know, servicing the band their you know, like your job is to, you know, play coheed songs to the epicness yes. at a level. Yeah. You know? Yeah. Like so you got you don't want to yeah. disappoint the band, you don't want to disappoint the fans, certainly don't want to disappoint yourself. So like <laughs> Yeah, it was like, it was a lot. I was right. like, I don't know what to do. Do you re- th- like do you think you can remember that gig? Like do I, you remember playing it? I remember playing it. Yeah. yeah. And I remember settling in like after like two or three songs and yeah. like, getting comfortable. But I, I remember like, you know, I was a little bit sensitive to like watching people's reactions. Yeah, like, you know, sure. Seeing if like they were like, oh, this guy sucks. Right. Oh my god, you know. And and it was. And it was, the whole time they were going, this guy rocks. Right. Oh, like, like, maybe hopefully, hopefully, <laughs> yeah. Right. Or they didn't notice you at all, which is also a win. Right. That is the biggest win. Yeah. Typically, when people are like, oh, I didn't even notice. I'm like, right. good. Well, you have the that smallest means I did my job. <laughs> yes, like, the best. Right, because you, you I, got the smallest hair on stage. Yes, right? yes. they're all looking at that guy with his. <laughs> yes. I have nothing drawing attention to me. I'm like <laughs> right. black t-shirt and jeans. Right, I'm just gonna fade into the shadows here. Right, as long as I don't play anything terrible, you're not even gonna know I'm here. We're good, and I still kind of try to operate like that. <laughs> Very nice. Well, yeah, it was it was a, it was a trip. And then so like after that double album, you guys released some more stuff, right? Yeah, yeah, we kept we kept making records. Just keep and, going. Yeah, and then like yeah. what is there has the experience been similar uh creating records going forward? Are you guys like like what's that process? Is it like a 6-month process? Are you going in and like cutting records quickly? I mean, there's so like detailed. I feel yeah. like it's a lot of studio. Yeah, time. The, well, it's been different lately. Like we the record we did after Afterman, we did live in Nashville. Okay. We recorded it all live. Okay. So before we went in, we we actually went like Claude was still living in New York okay. and it, out close to Alto and we went uh to his house and just jammed in the basement. Yeah. And like he had some he had the songs and we worked everything out yeah. and we're playing them live like every day for 
a week or two weeks or something like that, working mm -hmm. out what we're going to do and how, you know, getting it all together. And then we loaded up a truck and we went to Nashville, went to Nashville. like well, the truck drove to Nashville and we flew there, yeah. but we went to Nashville and we, we, we spent, uh, it was, it was a really cool studio. It was neon cross, I think. Okay. Um, it's got Jay Joyce produced it and it was an old church. Yeah. That Very cool. like, so we were, the band was set up on like, what would it be like the pulpit area yeah. and halfway back through where the pews were would be where the, um, was where the desk was. I right? feel like I may have seen a tour of this thing on Andrew Masters YouTube channel. It I was, could be wrong. It but. was such a cool spot. There's no it was like all yeah. in the in the room. There's no like live room. Yeah, there's no separate this is all control, tracked right? live. It was all tracked live. What's the yeah. record called? Color Before the Sun. Color Before the Sun. All tracked live. All tracked live. And we did I bet it, it sounds enormous. Sequentially. Oh, so wow. we did like the first song was the first day. Island. Wow. We did and it was literally it was so wild, man. We we set up, we got some sounds, we tracked we so we we did a couple of takes like yeah six or seven takes broke for lunch picked the take we liked the best claude tracked the vocals in the afternoon done wow second day i think eraser is the second wow. song and we literally went in in order claude had the order ready he was like i want it to lay out perfectly on an lp yeah and uh, like kind of design the track list yeah. so that like all right this is what's going to close out side a this is what's going to open side b like he had this whole idea with that yeah and we literally went down it was we monday through friday monday through friday so five songs five songs side a side b so it's yeah. 10 songs uh so two weeks to track the record and then we did two weeks to mix the record so it was like wow. the first day we mixed the first song second yeah. day we mixed the second song like and we just went through. Yeah. And, and you know, I think, like, when we were doing the mixing, we did a couple overdubs, like, sure. wa wild guitar overdubs. Uh, we were talking the other day. Jay had me double track the choruses in that song, Eraser, with a bass six. Okay. So it was, like, distorted yeah. bass six. And I had to, like, figure out all the little noodly fills I played. I had to, like, nail them, which right. was pretty fun and interesting. <laughs> um, so, yeah, that was, a cool, that was a cool record. And yeah. that was totally different from anything we've done before or right, since. Right, because they had all that stuff mostly tracked and then you came in over the top and did you, your thing. Yeah, exactly. Right. After Man, it was like, they were almost done with stuff when right. I came in. And then this was like, we're all playing it live. Yeah. Which was super fun. Do you know with um, After Man, was there already, like, since the album was, sounds like, mostly done, was there already bass over all that and then, like, something fell through and they just decided to not mm -hmm. use that I don't work or? think so. No, I the, I know that the first couple of songs there was another guy yeah. who was tracking that stuff. Uh -huh. um, but after a certain point, I don't know. I don't think that he was still doing it. Yeah. And then there was nothing like you know when I was coming in more, I was hearing like demos and stuff, and there wasn't sure. anything already there. So. Okay. Yeah. And then so like is that is I mean is like this current songwriting of the last couple of years? Is it really like Claude comes in with this, like, you know, big blueprint. And then, like you said, gives you a lot of agency to do what you want. Oh, yeah, yeah. Or yeah. is it like, all right, guys, I got a riff. I got a riff. And you kind of, like, develop it in the room or? No, so lately it's been remote. Like, really? Yeah, starting in 2020, he had a bunch of demos. And then he started sending them around. Yeah. Josh would track drums and then send them back to Claude. And he would, like, put them in the session yeah and then he would send it to me and i would track stuff he would send it to travis yeah we were because we were it was like 2020 everybody's home right so mm -hmm. we did the second vaxis record all remote okay um and then the new one like we the next record is done yeah uh and it was the same way we just did yeah. it remote and we're so now it's like this interesting workflow where we're working on records kind of all the time yeah like there's songs just that's great. Do you have a, around a favorite way of those ways that you've done this? That, my favorite way, yeah. personally, was doing it live. Doing yeah. it live. That, that was that sounds my, like such an experience. It was so much fun. It was so cool. I felt so prepared going yeah. in. And it was so, so cool to, like, just play the song. 
And yeah. like we started at like 10 a.m. Mm-hmm. and by 5 p.m. like it was in the can. And there's, yeah. I mean, there's an undeniable energy that energy, you're able to yeah, capitalize on. Absolutely, with all it was your, like buds. this energy and this like, like it was, and it was also just a fun experience. Yeah, it was so cool. And every take, like you know, you'd start out being a little stiff and like yeah. I don't want to miss anything. And by like take three, you're like, oh, you know what? I'm gonna try this thing though. Well, let's yeah. See how this. And works. then, then all of a sudden, someone's like. Ooh. Yes, yes. When you start warming up and you're like, "Hey, let's cut. Somebody, Do that again." It's like, like why did we cut? That was cool. Yeah. You know, you're like talking right. about it. like that. It was so fun. Um, I loved that. That's that's my sensibility. Yeah. I like live. I like a little loose. I sure. like you know, for as much as I like to be a very precise player, I like energy. I like things to be a little bit, um, you know. Like just emotional, right? Like it's yeah, yeah. You know, little. It's a little this as opposed to being a laser beam. Right? Yeah, yeah, yeah. I don't like that super focus, and it's cool. I get, I understand it, and I, right. I dig that too. But I, I definitely have this like, you know, I, I listen to a lot of improvised music. I like yeah. the, the like edginess of it. The yeah. Like, hey man, this might fall apart. It's unpredictable. It might not. Yeah, yeah. yeah. Right. And so I, I, that was my preferred method. Yeah. But you know, I don't call those shots. <laughs> right, right here. I'm just here to play bass. I'm just happy. I'm happy to be here, man. Like whatever it's gonna be. Well, the, the remote thing is fun too, because then I get to like, it's kind of neat because in that in in doing it remote, I'm in my like home office, right? Like recording, mm-hmm. and I can take time. I can go down wacky rabbit holes trying right. to find something to play mm-hmm. that maybe I wouldn't normally do. And if I waste anybody's time, it's only Just my own. Just yours, so it right? It doesn't matter. There's yeah. nobody looking at the clock like, dude, we're paying to be here. Yeah. yeah. And this that's a good, that's, shit sounds like up. nonsense. What right. are you doing? You yeah. know what right. I mean? And I can do that. And if it leads somewhere, which sometimes it does. Sure. And right. it's like, wow, cool. I would never have thought of this. This is a cool way to right. approach or it. Or even if it's like, hey, Claude, I did uh, two different verse ideas yes. here like list a b m tell me what you like absolutely you and i've definitely i've done that like right. i've sent it but i won't send them both i'll send them the one that i think is cool <laughs> i'll be like i'll send that one yeah. and i'll have like kind of a safe one right tucked away like right. and i'll send the and like almost 10 times out of 10 he's like this is awesome and i'm like right. cool yeah. right. We're good. that's right. good We're yeah good. you've got the instinct at yes this point yeah well, so the tour started yesterday in Detroit. Yes. Sold out. Woohoo! Little Caesars Arena. You know, I'm from the D. Did Little they Caesars. did they like have pizzas for you? After the show, we had piles of Little Caesars. Uh, <laughs> yes. Yeah. Did they bring the sauce though? No, we didn't. You have can't it. have I mean, fucking Little have Caesars sauce, without man. the fucking crazy sauce. <laughs> we didn't have What is this? No crazy bread. No, no sauce. No, no crazy sauce. bread. It was plain what pepperoni. Doing, that was it. Um, yeah. yeah. And you guys are touring with Incubus right now. I got to run yes. with Incubus. Yep. Um, you guys are playing Chicago tonight. Tonight. Be there. That I'm looking very much forward to yeah, that. Yeah, that's going to be fun. Um, and then, so, like, what do you think? Like, I know you've got, what, maybe a dozen dates or so with Incubus, right? Mm-hmm. Um, and then, like, what do you, what's, like, the next year, maybe 18 months, 16 months of Coheed? You know? So we, we have, after we finish this tour with Incubus, we do, um, we have a couple festivals. We're doing like Furnace Fest okay. in Birmingham and When We Were Young out in Vegas. Nice. Okay. Uh, both, I think we're doing the Good Apollo record start oh, to finish. Man. And then we that go to... The, that was the one that hooked me, man. That's that's the big one. Yeah, yeah. So Is that, Was that announced yet? Yes. Okay. Yeah. All Just that making... stuff in it. Yep. <laughs> as far, I mean, as far as like what albums you're playing. Yes. Okay, yeah, cool. yeah. It's all, all announced. Uh, and then uh, we go to Australia and keep doing that record yeah. over there. Okay. So Very we have cool. some shows booked over there. Um, and then we come home. That's like, that brings us into mid, early, mid November. Okay. And then we're, we'll, you know, break for a little bit. And then next year at some point should be a record. And yeah. that starts the machine the whole, up again. The, next cycle. the whole thing. Yeah, start the cycle up. Um, yeah. And then uh, what. Like, you know, they're all concept albums and there's graphic novels that go along with it. Is it like, does that stuff get written first or like, do you know how that process works? So I think, well, I know for a fact the next record, like the record is done, but the story is still being. Written. Okay. So I, 
think that there's like a framework. Is that Claudio he has. writing all that stuff? He and his wife. He and his yeah, wife. Yeah, he and his and wife. He's just like a yeah. artist. Artist. He is the. It is amazing watching. I feel like the laziest person ever when I am watching him on the road. Like he's always writing music. He's yeah. writing story. He's like work. He's always working on something. Yeah. Like being creative, getting something out, getting something out. And sometimes I'm content yeah. to just like sit and read a book and drink some coffee right. and like play a or video just like game. yeah play video games <laughs> or like go to, go to like get in a hotel room and like watch tv right just be yeah. like uh it's so right. but is that like the the dynamic like everybody in the band just kind of lets him he just does he, he just does he's, it he's like an all, unstoppable force i that's, do you does yeah. he ever like come to you all for input or like ask for i mean any sort of input like not with that kind of not like story stuff usually because he and his wife he and chandra are like such a team with that yeah, like yeah. they they kind of work but on even that the stuff. orchestration of the record <clears throat> the the music typically i mean he's he's like lately especially it's like already so much there by the time yeah. i even hear it usually that it's like i'm just gonna like right try to make this yeah. better just try, try to, to keep bring, up. try to keep up yeah right yeah i've even like called him or texted him like when i get a a, a track and been like dude this is dense like i don't even know <laughs> where to begin right. like there's you know like all these guitar parts synthesizers there's like yeah. modular synths like making all kinds of noise and josh is playing these like crazy drum yeah grooves and stuff and i'm like ah where do i fit in this puzzle how do i <laughs> right. you know what am i gonna do right um but yeah i mean he he's he's just like a visionary with that kind of stuff. Does he so. do like illustrations too? He, I mean, he he'll draw, but he doesn't. I don't. He doesn't do it like he's for not the, the final story. or whatever. Yeah. He just kind of comes yeah. up with some concepts. Yeah, or whatever. He, but he has artists that he like works with, and the the same guy who's done the last two records, I think, is going to do the, is doing the newest one, and so he like you know gets yeah. like roughs back and sure. like talks through that stuff. Yeah, he's always going, man. It's it's yeah. pretty, it's amazing and yeah. it's inspiring and it's also. Uh, it's intimidating, right? It can be, yeah, yeah, for sure. You know, sure. like I've I've been in bands or worked with musicians who outwork me, outwrite me, like from a ten to one kind of ratio, and then they're like, "All right, you show up the next day, you're like, all right, I got this other thing that I was working on last night,' and I'm like, "Holy shit, man!" We, you're, yeah, we, you're <laughs> like, "Man, last night all I did was like sit around and <laughs> right, yeah, I didn't yeah. Do, what are you, I, you know?" And it can be can be intimidating, but I think that also like, you know, in in my situation when that's happened. I've always kind of just played the Robin role. Like, you're Batman. Yeah. You know, and I'll give, you get final say on everything. Absolutely. And, but I'm here yeah. to, to, I'm Scotty Pippen, and I'm happy to be Scotty Pippen. Yeah, I'm just yeah, happy. Scotty you know. Pippen to your Batman. Right. Dude, I'm just happy, I'm happy to be right. uh, on the Bulls. Right. Like, I'm not even Scotty Pippen. <laughs> no. I'm just happy to be playing with the Bulls. <laughs> All right, just, man. I'll work the bench, you know. Yeah, yeah. Um, no, yeah. That, that's awesome. And it, uh, yeah, that's very, very, very cool. It's uh, yeah, it's pretty, it's pretty wild. Yeah. Wow. So you're you're family man. Yeah. Post tour and post like recording session, uh, like mindset. You know, I would imagine wanting to be with the fam and everything, and maximizing on that time. Of course, your kids are like what, like thirteen ish, and yeah, my oldest will be thirteen in November, and my youngest is six. Okay, or seven. So your school mode, you school know, mode, how, yeah. Yep. Uh, what's what's like the first thing that you look forward to when you get home from tour? I so typically first day home, like we'll get the kids and we'll go out for dinner, and then we'll go get ice cream. Right. And just like you know, just like dad's home. Hey, dad's home. Dinner and ice cream. Let's party. This right. is awesome. And then I honestly, my favorite thing about getting home is like jumping right back into like dad routine. Yeah. Like drop off and pick up from school how was your day help you with homework like chores around the house i usually yeah. get home and there's like a bunch of stuff i got to take care of yeah you know all of my wife is like super handy so uh, you know it's not like i have you know right crazy stuff but it's you know it's like i jump back into projects that i left when i went yeah. away and and but yeah mostly just being dad yeah and just being home and yeah. like spending time with the kids but and, are you typically like are you gone for like months at a time, or is it usually like not, month? Uh, yeah, around? it's not usually that long. This summer has been long. Yeah, like we. 
I flew out to L.A. to start rehearsals, like, the beginning of July. Okay. And we did, like, a couple of days of rehearsals, and we just did this whole tour with Primus. Yeah. Which was amazing. I bet. And then I had three days off, so I flew home, spent two days at home, and then I flew up to Detroit the day before yesterday to yeah. start the tour with Incubus. Wow. So it's like, just go, go, go. Did you, you get know? to hang out with Les at all? Yes. Any yeah. cool less? Oh, he's he, everybody in that band. Like Tim, Les, Lur. Yeah. Nicest guys. Yeah. They were like so incredibly welcoming. They were so cool. Yeah. Um, yeah, just like great hangs. Very Les cool. and I connected like a little bit over our shared love of Rocco Prestia. Okay. Oh, which was hell yeah. Awesome. Hell yeah. <laughs> we started nerding out about that a little bit and like Good. yeah, there, there Thanks was, for there the were, tip. Next yeah. time I meet Les, yeah. we'll just... You just talk Tower of Power, you're in. That's awesome. <laughs> no, it's serious. They, they, were, they were so cool, like, all, all of them. Their whole camp, every, yeah, everything about it. And it was, it was super inspiring. Like, they, of all the bands we've ever toured with, I think they're the band that I've watched the most. I yeah. went and watched them almost every night of that tour. Yeah. Were you on the show where their gear didn't show up and they? No, just, they no, that was. I think gear? that was on the when they were on the Sasanta tour. Okay. Yeah. That, that happened. Yeah. Okay. Yeah. Awesome. Awesome. Um, well, I mean, we've been going for over an hour and a half. Do we? I think we. I think we. We should probably break into some some, some, some rapid, rapid fire, fire time. questions now. Uh-oh. Uh oh. <laughs> I don't have my book with me, but I think we I can, can do remember. This. I think we could do this from memory. I think we could, but I also think at some point I might have wrote this down. Let me see. Uh, oh, the speed round. The, the speed lightning speed round. round. <laughs> Here we go. Uh, We're going to add in a, an effect there, right there. Yeah! <laughs> just, like, just like the shreddiest part of one of your songs. <laughs> Tour, man. Tour. I, listen, man. I, it. I don't know if I told you, but like... I've been listening to Coheed for, you know, since for 20 years now. Oh, that's you awesome. know, and yeah. like been a fan for a long time. And um, I wish I could, you know, it's one of those bands that like, there's not many other bands like Coheed, like yeah. sonically. Yeah. You know, I mean, there's a lot of elements and stuff, but like with his voice being very unique. Unique, you know, yeah, absolutely. And like the heavy fucking guitarist. And I... Yeah, 16, 17 year old Jody wanted to be James Hatfield, right? Oh, hell yeah. Dude, I was, who did? I did too. <laughs> Come on. So I had the Mesa Boogie rig and I had an ESP Explorer. And then when Claude was always playing the Explorers, I was like, man, that's my boy right there, yeah, you know? Yeah. Um, and just like heavy, heavy riffs like just captured me. And I've been been a fan for a very long time. It's funny because we were talking the other day about how he, when he first bought his Explorer, Mm -hmm. like the band was, you know, starting to pick up some steam and he went to a guitar center and saw like the Explorer and an SG and he was like, he was like, well, man, James Hetfield plays that. (laughs) Angus Young plays that. Like, I'll get those. (laughs) Like, they're rock and roll guitars. There we go. That's all I need. Yeah. Yeah, Cosign on it. Hell yeah, man. I, I feel that. Um, yeah, it was a bit of, been of, and like, I think, I feel like it's, it's weird that, like, you know, I, it was like back when you still bought CDs and I was yeah. listening to it in yeah. my, my 96 Ford Escort that I put the, the big subwoofer in and yeah. all that. Um, and then, <laughs> you know, like I, there, you go through phases in your life where like maybe for a couple of years, I probably hadn't listened to any Coheed stuff. <laughs> and then for whatever reason, like maybe a year ago, I was like fuck, man, let's start, get it back in the rotation, you know? Yeah, yeah, yeah. So I've been, like, over the past year or so, it's been, like, a pretty heavy rotation of just, like, just all of it, you know? Just it, song, any song from any album will just, like, pop up on my... Because I got heavy back into, like, Harding stuff on Spotify. Oh, yeah, yeah, Cause yeah. Because I yeah. did that a long time ago on Apple Music. Yeah. And I ha- was very serious about my curation... Yes. ...of music on yes. my Apple music thing. And this was before streaming was like a big thing. So this is when you had MP3s on your computer, you know, and I would, you had a five star selection to choose from. And I had five stars. I had four stars and I even had a couple three stars, right? Wow. Nobody was a two. If you're a two or one, you don't even make I it. I'm not even putting th- a star I'm not there. even labeling you, right? So then I did that for a couple of years. And then for whatever reason happened one year, I lost all my ratings when I got a new computer or something happened. And ever since then, I've just been like, I fucking hate you. You know, I hate you, Apple. I can't believe you did this to me. <laughs> I say it as a guy who has 
all Apple products, but yeah. Same, that yeah. thing burned yeah. me. And then that transition to what Apple Music is today, which is basically Spotify, right? I use Spotify. So now I'm like, over the past two years, I'm like, all right, I guess I got to start harding stuff again. And I hope I don't lose my my rankings and all this stuff to, <laughs> you know, but I felt really burned because I, and I would, to this day, I know there are songs that I five starred that I will probably never hear again. Yeah, yeah, Because yeah, yeah. I just yeah. don't remember it, but I knew if I heard that song again, I'd be like, oh, you know. So I'm heavy back into the, into the ratings here. Oh, that's awesome. Um, all right, let's see. Yeah, I get the same way. It's funny, I, I actually texted my wife on my way here. My youngest daughter, Earlier in the year, she she had like her sister's old iPod. She used to love listening to music on it. And she, we flew up to New York, and she left it on the plane. And she was like oh, devastated. No. So my and they you know they don't make the iPod anymore. Yeah. So my wife found like a, a new old stock one at like Best Buy and ordered it for her. Yeah. So we got it all set up yesterday, and she just used my like Apple ID to log in right. and set it up, and. Uh, I opened my phone this morning and my music library, I like, you know, all the newest things that you've added, I, like nothing that Chapel I've added. Chapel Rowan is there. and Sabrina. It's all like, it's, it's like, you know, every Taylor Swift album, <laughs> uh, like Disney zombies movie yeah. soundtracks and like. Bluey soundtrack? Blue, bluey, yeah. Old, bluey head? My girls are like bluey all, all the way. My well, boys love Your daughter's about to be 13, right? Yeah, my so oldest is, is about to be 13, but my youngest is the one who is doing this to me right now. <laughs> well, Because so, my oldest has her own email, so she's got her oh, own app her own thing, right? So I texted my wife on the way here, I was like, yo, we have to get Sloan her own email and her own Apple ID because my right. music library is unrecognizable and my <laughs> algorithm is going to be all whacked out now. One day you're going to plug <laughs> your phone in in the tour bus and all of a sudden Taylor Swift's yeah. going to start flapping. Oh, dude, I I'm always going to look over and go like, what? I always have like those albums are like downloaded on my phone for sure. like when we're driving and dude same here yeah she's right. yeah. My, my kids i have a i have a running like couple playlists on whatever service you know and uh it's they're called the boys and it's just like stuff that my oldest son will just add to it yep and you know they're all saved on the phone every device that we've got it just like goes everywhere it, that way if there's no signal like they, they could just listen to those yep. he's got his little beats and stuff like that and it's right. usually like you know skibbity toilet Whatever, oh, uh, like Fortnite bullshit. My, my Even though my oldest. kid doesn't play Fortnite. Yeah. Like, Don't, where did? Why did that happen? Uh, that, uh, dude, I, my oldest knows all that stuff, and and same. She doesn't play Fortnite, but she knows all that slang and all the like that weird meme. All language. the dances and shit. Yeah. Yeah, it's crazy. It's crazy man, it's crazy. Are we Are we ready for the well, all rapid right. fire? We're gonna do some rapid fire questions. There are no wrong answers. First thing that pops in your head. Um, oh, you can pass if you want to pass, um, but. Are you ready? I'm ready. All right. Let's do it. Active or passive bases? Passive. Uh, favorite fretboard material? Uh, probably rosewood. Um, do you have a favorite speaker size? 12s. Even though I don't use them on tour right now, but 12s are definitely my favorite. Okay. Do you prefer combo amps or separate head and cabinet? Depends on the gig. More often than not, it's head and cabinet, though. Um, favorite bass players or a couple of your favorites? Oh, my goodness. Could be upright. Could be live, dead. All right, how long do you have? You want to be here well, for another hour? No, no, I'll get, five, I'll, 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 no, I'll, 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 I'll rattle off a bunch. Uh, Rocco, Prestia, John Paul Jones, yeah. uh, Joe Lally, Billy Gould, okay, Colin Greenwood. Of course. Uh, oh, who else? Who else do I have in my brain? Les Tim, Tim Lefave, yeah, Les Claypool. Uh, Billy Gould's Faith No More, yeah, Faith No More, yeah. 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 Billy is. <sighs> Yeah, Man. fuck yeah, My dude. <laughs> one of the best, like, most crushing basses ever. Like, oh. you hear that Zahn sound yeah, from the fucking like, yeah, eight, late so 80s? it's so heavy, man. It, nice. But it's crisp. So, crisp. Ping, ping. Yeah. It's just crushing, crushing. Uh, who else? Chris Wood. Okay. Uh, MMW fan, yeah. Yep, yeah, yep, yeah, yep. Yeah. Um, and then, you know, Charlie Hayden, Gary Peacock. Awesome. All, all the, I mean, just a like, solid list. Yeah, so many, so many guys that I, I just love, and I'm forgetting like right, hundreds, way, way more than I probably should be forgetting. But um, hard case or gig bag? Gig bag. Do you have a favorite gig bag? Uh, I mean, right now I have like a couple of mono gig yeah. bags that I use. Mm -hmm. Those are super solid. I fly all over the place with them, and they're great. Um, tube, solid state. Uh, 
solid state on the road for sure. Okay. What's your current base rig setup? Base, pedals, amps? So uh, right now I've got two Yamaha BB, what were they, the BBP34, yeah. the broad base yeah. base. Yeah. Okay. Um, so I have two of those out right now. Uh, we put in Seymour Duncan quarter pounders. Okay. Mm -hmm. uh, and also took out everything. It, both pickups are wired to one volume control and that's it. Nice. Okay. Um, so yeah, it's just pretty simple. I don't, if I have too many options, I'm going to be messing around. Messing just, with it too yeah, much. I just, it's just like on or off. Know that's thyself. It. Yes, know thyself, yeah. And then what's the amp situation? Uh, Aguilar DB751. Okay. I have two of those and two Aguilar DB810s. Nice. Um, it's a great rig. Um, yeah, that thing is like the loudest amp, the cleanest. It's and the heaviest. He and the heaviest, yeah. Oh, trust me, the crew guys have already <laughs> let me know that they're, they're bummed that I... <laughs> no, they're not bummed, but they're right. like... Like, you know, we kind of miss those Neo cabinets, you know, like the, the yeah. ones that you have. And you're like with a big go, but like, go, man. I'm like, noted. Peace. And you go off on your segue. I'm going to order another one. <laughs> yeah. yeah. With your like, like extra like two fans yeah. on there. You know? Two fans <laughs> and a nice drink with an umbrella. And like, nice. One of those like little like like devices you attach to your belt that just makes your shirt <laughs> cool you off. Yes. You know? yes. Right. TC right. Tuggers. Yes. Yes. Um, no, but that that's that's the rig. And I have a couple pedals. I'm always changing pedals out on my board. Right okay. now I have uh, my buddy James who's looking after Travis and I. He builds pedals. Okay. He has a company called Bowman Audio Endeavors. Oh, nice. So I have one of his uh, the Odious. It's like a a fuzz octave. Yeah. Pedal. Okay. I have a, a CMC Proto on there, uh, which is like a great drive pedal, an Aguilar Optimizer, mm -hmm. uh, a DL4. Do you have a favorite pedal? Favorite pedal? Of all time. Of all time. Pro all right, so the one pedal that like has been on my board for like almost ever, that, I, that literally just kind of went off because I was using some other stuff, is the Mantic Vitriol. I don't know what, what that is. Yeah, what is that? It's like a distortion pedal yeah and it's just like rip your face off mantic clean. yeah vitriol yeah yeah mantic they're they're a they uh they're out of colorado and mm -hmm. those guys are awesome mm -hmm. and uh yeah that vitriol pedal is like just crushing nice it's so cool yeah cool um do you have what uh what kind of strings are you using uh ernie balls okay yeah. so like super slinkies or? slinkies okay. yeah yep um, do you have a favorite hardware finish? Black, chrome, gold, nickel? Typically chrome, yeah. But I do okay. this kind of weird thing. The, all the guys look at me funny. I put a black hip shot basic like extender on the E-string. Uh-huh. Yeah. Um, it's kind of like a nod to one of my old teachers, my, my dear friend, okay. Robert Kilpeck. He's the right. best dude. Yeah. Do you He's ever cool. flip He's the awesome. switch and drop Always. it? To <laughs> Always. Yeah, yeah, yeah. So, like... <laughs> It's actually really convenient because when the other guys are doing guitar changes for drop D, I just go bloop, and I'm right. there. I'm ready to go. You're ready. Nice. Are you doing all four string? Yeah, all four string. Okay. Yeah, so I have one, I have one bass out. It's a a Nash, um, the what is it? The sixty three, the P D yeah. bass one. Yeah. Uh, so I have one of those that's tuned uh, B E A D. Okay. So it's like my. Yeah. You got to get low. Yeah, yeah, because we, we were doing some stuff where Claude was playing baritone and stuff mm. like that. So, all right, um, is there a band or artist you wish you could do an album with, play with, tour with? Oh man, yeah, there's there's a there's probably a lot. Well, give me yeah. one or two. Give me oh, one or two. Man, like somebody that I wish I, that's working right now that I wish oh, I could well, play with. Yeah, or, I would alive think. or dead. I mean, alive I think, or dead. Yeah, alive or dead. I think is good, but I also I feel like one alive, one dead. Like, cause we like to dead. manifest here, right? Ah, oh, okay. All right, all right, all right. All right. Uh, uh, yeah, I, I mean, I I would love to do, like, probably anything in the like uh, Radiohead okay. world. Colin, smile, like, yeah, Colin, smile, yeah. yeah, right, like something in that kind of okay arena. Very cool. Um. Yeah, or or just you know, like get to get to make some noise with with some noisemakers like right. like a Nels Klein or somebody like that. Okay. Or, you know. or John Medeski. Or John Medeski. Yeah. There you go. Exactly. Well, you've already technically. Yeah, but in, 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 <laughs> yeah, you know what you know what I mean. Oh, I hear you. I hear you. Yeah. Uh, do you have thoughts and feelings on relict instruments? I like them. 
like them? Yeah, I have. Okay. I have a couple of. Them. You've got Nash. Yeah. Um, and then I've got one more, which has become the most important question. <laughs> what is your shopping cart etiquette? When you go to the grocery store Ooh. and you fill up your grocery cart, you go to the car, you put all your groceries in the car, and now you got an empty cart. And there's a cart corral 50 feet away. The store is over there. There's maybe a median island right here. There's no car <laughs> next to you. Where, which, way, which direction are you going? What am I doing with yeah, it? Yeah, what are you doing there with the cart? There is nothing that will get me to not return that cart. No obstacle in the world. You could have lava flows. You, there, there could be like a mountain I have to scale with that thing on my back. I will get that cart back, either to a, a, a corral, corral or, or, the or I'll bring it to the store. store. Yeah, I can't. I Nicole is the same them. way. Nicole was really? very, yeah, this, oh yeah. This all started because of our buddy Ryan Stasek, who sat right there, uh, and we started uh, talking about yeah. shopping carts. It's just been a, a going ongoing theme. Oh, and they so, were broed out about it. Like, oh, <laughs> you, uh, Ryan goes, you know how I judge a human? What do you do with your cart after you unload your groceries? <laughs> and Mark was like, test. amen, brother. And they're hugging. And I'm just sitting over here and going like, man, I know we were I this didn't close put my kissing. cart back. Oh, oh yeah. yeah I, I believe it. I believe it. I, I know I didn't put my... I, so I'm like... I always secure my cart on a median or something, but I don't always put it in the crowd. Oh, yeah. But I say that like I've been shamed enough now that I'm definitely trending towards putting the cart back in the corral more than I ever have. <laughs> I will not say it's 100% kind of situational, but... Uh, here's why you get... Here's why I'm willing to give you a pass. <laughs> why is that? Because you are honest. Oh, I'm you were I always lie honest. About it. If you, oh yeah, if you, if you're gonna own it, like yeah. No, I mean, I just, I won't lie about anything. I'm gonna tell I get, the truth. I get, I get the the inconvenience. I get, I just, I can't, I can't live with it. I, I yeah. have to bring it back. I don't I see the problem sure. with like, there's a median right there, just bloop, well, like front so wheels on the median. Maybe part of this for me, like there was a, I, you know, I worked a job at like a store when I was in high school mm-hmm. and I had to go out and collect carts. carts. Yeah. And there might be an element of that. Sure, like, I'm sure if in I the was back a cart of my mind. Or just working in the service industry for as long. Yes. And like understanding that like everything that we do when we're out in public, like somebody else is going to affect up. somebody else. Right. Yeah. And mm-hmm. I, and the other thing is like I you know I live in Florida, it's super hot. I watch these like high school kids mm-hmm. get the carts and wheel them back in and put them back and everything and I'm like, I'm not gonna make your life more difficult. And I and I watch other people do it. I've brought other people's carts. To oh, same. And I do it. I cuss the whole way. Oh, I dude. I I will throw. Now my bit. kids are cussing. My <laughs> my kids. You should like if they see carts, they're like oh, scumbags. So, this like, this, oh, you, this, this started all all started as like this like this is a litmus test of what a, what a good person really is. But I think it doesn't tell the whole story. Like sure, we pull we put the carts back. We've talked to a lot of people who like adamantly are putting the carts back, but. We got somebody who's always fucking honest here, who honest, who's honest about not always putting not it away. And I'm back. willing to bet you that of all the people we talked about with on this topic, the people who put it away, I guarantee you, there's some liars. Oh, there's some fibber McGee's in that there's bunch. Gotta be I'm a couple fucking fibbers. right here. <laughs> right. I think be the a amount that I fib, plus the amount that I put my cart back, which is always, versus <laughs> you always telling the truth, <laughs> not always putting the cart back. I think we've found like the ideal specimen in there. Equilibrium. Could be. Could yeah. Be. Reached e- yeah. yeah. Right. If you're lying all the time and not putting your cart back, you're going to hell. Dude. Yeah, it's bad news. Man. Like hell I doesn't feel bad exist, for you, but buddy. it does just for those people. I feel bad for you. Yeah. <laughs> well, I think for me, I think what Look at it that is sigh is... of relief. Like, <laughs> oh like, god, I'm a good person. Oh, good. Well, I ever knew. Uh, <laughs> at least now I know for sure. Yeah. Well, as be- <laughs> being a contractor, you know, I'm remodeling houses, kitchens. Dude, bathrooms, don't whatever. fucking Listen, justify I'll go it. to Home Depot. <laughs> don't justify it. Three times in one you're day. You're already an honest guy, dude. We know you're a good dude. It's all good. <laughs> but see, at Home Depot, you're a piece of they, shit. They have the corrals, but they also line up the carts. At the like they at the front like, median in there. the parking lot almost right, yeah. right? Yeah, yeah 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 you know sometimes I just like listen if you're gonna line up your own carts in the front here in the like yeah. driveway I'm gonna put the cart next to the other carts I, that seems reasonable to me sure um, I get that I get that but it, sometimes you know I'm going to the Marianos and it's like well I'm the curb is right here so yeah. I'll just 
Co- Costco mm. is the worst about that. I don't go to period. Costco. Yeah. 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 Um, so well, that's that's all the rapid fire I have. Now, Mark might have some rapid fire that are uh, not base related for you. Oh, it's never base related Rock on my side. Right. Yeah. yeah. Here we go. All right. So you're getting home from tour, taking the family out to dinner. What's the restaurant? Uh, we go to nine times out of ten. There's a brewery that we live close to called Good Liquid. Good that Liquid. We go to, yeah. What's your favorite dish on the menu? I get, uh, they do this uh, burger with like grilled onions and mustard yeah. that I really dig. Just yeah. super simple? Super simple. What are the kids getting? Yeah, the kids, chicken fingers. Chicken fingers, all, all day, are they good? Chicken fingers. But do you, like, there's leftover chicken fingers usually by the end of it? I'm scarfing them. You're scarfing them? Yeah, yeah. They, they, yeah. What's your wife usually get? Yeah, my wife will get a burger too. Get a burger? She's a big burger fan. And yeah. do you all like to drink beer as well? Yes. What's your yeah. favorite beer on the menu on tap? So, so they have a, a Kolsch that I really like. Oh, cool. That I get. Yeah, yeah. so like the Eastern European style? Yep. So yep. it's a lager, right? It's usually? like a lager. Yeah, yeah, yeah. They do that, and there's a there's a pilsner that I like too. You got thrills for the pills. I got I love the pills, man. Yeah, I don't I can, know. I can I, tell, dude. It's not. I went to San Diego recently. Recently, that place is electric. <laughs> it's a part. It's a Brooklyn Nine Nine reference. Yes, oh, it's yes. a Belgium. They have the best yes, spaghetti. Yes, and it's so funny because like my wife and I just like recently watched that the whole series and and she would. Oh, like, Brooklyn Nine Nine. Yeah, she would laugh at me because of the, yeah, the I got thr- thrills for the pills. She's thrills like, for the she's pills. like, like you're always talking man. about pills. And I'm like, all right. Like, what's your favorite God, Halloween sorry. heist? Oh man. Oh, uh, let's see. There's no wrong answer let's on that see. one. No, yeah, I know. I like. Oh, now I'm trying to remember them all. Damn. And probably the first one. First one's a solid. Yeah. That's the solid first answer. one where they set the they set the precedent for it. Yeah. yeah, I would I would say first one and, and the last one, like the, the the final episode, just like made me cry. That yeah, that's true. It's a super fun yeah, one. That was a super fun one. Who's your favorite Brooklyn Nine Nine character? My favorite Brooklyn Nine Nine character. It's, I mean. It's such an ensemble. Yeah, it really is, man. I I I haven't seen many episodes. My wife is a big fan. I I don't know the character's name, but he's like the nerdy cop that Boyle. Boyle, yeah, yeah. Short yeah, yeah, yeah. He's the yeah. one I, I think I, I, I think Holt might be my favorite. Same dude. You know? I'm a Holt. Yeah, I'm a Holt, Holt is whore. hilarious. I am a Holt whore. Holt and, I, and, and and Kevin. Yes. Both of his husband, yes. dude. Yes. Fucking A. Hilarious. <laughs> hilarious. Yeah, I, especially when he like finally comes down to their level. Yes. It, which yes. starts with the heists, really. I, that's when you start to see like him you know, oh, kind of interacting that, more that as a cold yeah. open where he's like getting the Medal of Honor and he like he like, you know, it's like thank you, uh d- you know, deputy uh Commissioner one, you know, appreciate it. And she's like, oh, he'll come back? Okay. Yeah. And she walks away and he goes, you know, like, what is that? Which time is over? Yeah, boom. 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 Out of both ways. No regrets. <laughs> yes. So good. Yes. So it's good. just so good. So good. Anyway. Uh, I also love Hitchcock and Sully. Oh, like, fuck oh, dude, the, the one episode it's Rose where... It's Rosencrantz and where, Guildenstern. That's like the, exactly. it's like Shakespearean characters. Dude, and <laughs> that, that episode where, where the, it's like their origin story, kind of. Oh, where they're yeah, like the, the weird two sluts. Yes, yes, yeah, the weird sluts. Like, yeah, dude, that you, is you have the no best. idea what we're talking about. Oh, know. it is so good. I may have seen... My so wife good. keeps going like... Uh, the truth is, I'm not a big Andy Samberg fan. Yeah. Oh, man. And she's like, no, Jody, you gotta... It's great. And we, I... Watch some episodes, and it's not bad. It just, I don't know. There's, like, so much good TV out there that I don't, it's not really quite making the cut, you know? Like, I will, I think at this point it's, like, good background TV kind of thing. Absolutely. You know, I'm not going to, like, You might might get surprised, though. Like, it might start to to draw you in. So I feel like that's what's happening is, like, a little bit. It's And, frankly, Andy Samberg is, like, such a small part, even even though he's yeah, like a main character. He's a main character, but it's not dependent on him. Right. Like, it's like so, I said, it's an ensemble. It's an cast. ensemble. Yeah. It's they're yeah. all amazing. They're they all bring something great to the, the table. Thing, and right? like as the show progresses, like it also like just what's going on in the real world, it goes with it. There's mm-hmm. some really like heartfelt and captivating moments on that show. Absolutely. Like, yeah. It, 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 I I recommend it for yep. sure. I'm glad Highly you like it too. Highly recommend. What's the other feel good show for you? Uh, I mean, that's tough. I, let me think. I, so probably Bob's Burgers. Oh, good. I watch that with my kids all the time. Nice. Like we are always watching that. And great show. just last night I was FaceTiming my girls and my oldest, I was like trying to talk to her and she was watching one, like 
there's an episode called The Fraud Files, mm -hmm. where it's about like their guidance counselor, at the, the kids' gu guidance counselor, and uh, it's it's an episode that my daughter and I have loved since she was like probably, uh, she must have been like six or something like that. Right. So, That's so good. it's so funny, and and there's there's this like. I don't know. I, I, I'll nerd out for a second here. Okay. Each of the kids has to write a report, like, about their school or, like, tell, write a story or something like that. And their kids' stories get disqualified from this, like, presentation. And they have to have, like, the, you know, Bob and Linda have to have a meeting with the guidance counselor. Yeah. And where he reads them the stories so they get reenacted, you know. <laughs> and one of them is, like, uh, and... <laughs> The oldest daughter writes erotic friend fiction. Oh, God, yes. <laughs> yes. So, uh, rubbing butts. So, yeah, yes, butts. And, but it's like zombies. All the, all the boys in the class become zombies. Oh and she's like all their zombie butts, right? Oh, my God. But my, the favorite one, and this is like my daughter and I love it, was Jean, their son's Eugene. story. Yeah. Was fart school for the gifted. <laughs> and it's, it's all about like going to <laughs> school and they're singing this song about farts will set you free and <laughs> farts are liberty and it's it's so funny so like uh when she when she was i was like trying to talk to her and she was like watching it and cracking up and my wife was like she's watching the frond files and i'm like oh like open up our butt cheeks this is how our butts speak <laughs> <laughs> and my wife is like oh my god oh. <laughs> and this goes back to her raising three kids yeah, and not, right. yeah so right. yeah awesome yeah that's my other feel-good show for sure do you ever catch any of the those com those comedians like their stand up? Have you ever caught any of their I, sets? I haven't really. No. I I mean, I, I would know think that Eugene Merman's <clears throat> probably the most active on. Yeah, on we actually did years ago. We did like a signing at something where he was sitting next to us. That's oh, yeah. so cool. So we kind of like talked to him a little bit. I'm sure he doesn't remember that. I just remember being like, oh shit, that's Eugene. Merman. That's so cool. Yeah. That's so funny. I I know that uh, John Benjamin did that like. Uh, jazz piano album have you ever heard that oh my god yes jazz daredevil <laughs> yes, yes i like that when it came out i was working here so and funny. like i heard it on the way it, it, so like you could tell the story well it's just like him playing right like so, yeah all right so i got from what i understand i don't know how accurate this is but i know that there's like a documentary for this like john benjamin wants to do a jazz piano record and he like books time at the studio <laughs> he hires a drummer a sax player and a bass player <laughs> They go into the session. They go first track. It's just like this, like he's like doing all that stuff, and then it's the piano to come in, right? And he comes in, and he doesn't know how to play piano. He doesn't know how to play piano. So he's just stumbling all over it, and like you listen to that song, and then it goes to like it had to be you, you know, like did it, and like he's playing along, and like. You could tell he's got some kind of musical understanding. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Because yeah. the notes and the rhythm are kind of where right. they should be, but they're not quite right. But it's, like, totally wrong. <laughs> and it's a whole record of that. And it's... It is so, so good. So hilarious. I put that on here, like, when the day it came out, and showing my coworkers, like, we're all just, just belly over, just crying. We're pissing tears out. It's laughing so hard. Yeah. It was so good. Yeah. That's a good one. That's a good one. Jazz a, Daredevil. That is a good one. Dude, I've got nothing else. This is this is a really solid hang. Oh, man. this yeah, is yeah. awesome. Thank this you guys for great. having me. This has been fantastic. Um, if somebody wants to follow you on the socials, where would they go? Uh, I'm on Instagram, at Zachary A. Cooper. But you could probably find me through the Coheed thing, yeah. too. Yeah. Uh, and and then uh, Coheed is just co at Coheed. At Coheed, yeah, yeah. Yep, yep, yep. And uh, that's probably the best place to find That's the only place I ever really post anything. It's, yeah few and far between i'm so bad at social media that's okay yeah we don't need any more of it i know I mean, we're, we're we're polluting it as well but, oh you guys yeah. are fantastic well, no. well, you know i'm like i mean little behind the scenes most of my posting is happening while i'm pooping okay <laughs> <laughs> that's what that's i'm like most, right, let me see what, what i have what i've got on my camera that's roll. where most of my liking is happening too so <laughs> yep and mo most of my responses and yeah. yes. are coming yes. from the john exactly. for sure so you can know that for sure. Yeah. If I'm interacting with you on there, that's, I, I, that's I, I, I was replying to some people just this morning on our page, and I was like, I just so I got the, the gout knee and stuff. And yeah, it's, yeah. It's a fucking process sitting down on the toilet, oh, right? I can so like, I gotta take my one. This 
I got to take <laughs> the underwear off of this foot right now because <laughs> otherwise it's just like a resistance yeah. band while I'm trying to sit and it's just stress on the knee. So I'm like, oh, damn it. Dude, I'm like, I finally get comfortable. I'm like, all right, what's going on in the world? I'm like, oh, it's a four string uh, hip shot DPT7 D2. You know? I'm just fucking mad. I'm just you like, idiot. God, you <laughs> it. Not my best self right hey, now. Hey, that's all right. That's all right. Uh, well, thanks so much. Thanks to Chicago Music Exchange again for letting us use their space. We really appreciate you, the mm. basement over here. And uh, you guys are on tour now. On tour. And tour forever till you die, forever. probably. Yes. So uh, go see the show. We're gonna. I'll, I'll be at the show tonight. I'm looking forward to it. With Incubus too, like two hell yeah. killer fucking bands. Yeah, it's gonna be. It's a. It's a great show. Yeah, really, really so. stoked me on this tour. Awesome. Well, thank you so much. I'm gonna stop.